welcome to this CodeBuddies.org live coding hangout. CodeBuddies is a global community of amazing people who help each other become better at software development through conversations on Slack and peer-to-peer -peer organized study groups and virtual hangouts. Today we will be continuing the Western Friend community website. There's a few uh, significant features uh, left before we are more or less on feature parity with the old website. Uh, we're not going to be 100% uh, equal. Some of the things might drop off or there's just differences between the way Drupal and Wagtail CMS work and we're just trying to make sure we capture the, the essential parts. So we've worked through an online magazine with a subscription component uh, enabling access to the most recent Art, uh, issues and articles in those issues. We've got a bookstore with a checkout process and online payment processing. Uh, we've got a multimedia library, a community directory, and the ability to create um, arbitrary pages such as the About Us page and a contact form. Who are missing uh, are uh, this, they're significant. They might not be the more complicated features, but they're nonetheless really important these memorial minutes and uh, donations form, which will hopefully share the uh, same checkout process. So today I'm going to try to see how far I can get um, building this memorial minutes page. So like every um, sort of landing page, we've got a title and an intro text that can be changed by the editor. Then. The lower part of the page is the, the functional part that's done through code. So we'll have uh, a directory of people's, um, looks like full name. I'll have to look at the data model in a moment and their birth and death dates, as well as a minute field. A minute meaning um, a letter, or oh, it's like a memorial, it's like, um, yeah, it's just essentially describing their lives. It's sort of a biography. I forget the exact word, but we call them a minute. And a related meeting. So that'll be a foreign key relationship to our community directory. So let's go ahead and check. We'll create a branch here. And let's see how far we can get. One moment, I'm just messing with my lighting a little bit. <laughs> well. Yeah. Memorial minutes. We've been using um, pretty much plural for the names of these apps. Oh no. Oh, I did spell it correctly. It just looked like it. The character switched. That was weird. That is weird. <laughs> I don't care to investigate why that happened. Okay, just triple checking memorials. This is the initial app. Uh, so we don't need the admin. We're not registering anything with the Django admin. We've been using the Wagtail admin for these apps. So we have three whispers here. that to trash. Uh, I will leave the tests in there uh, to remind myself. I'm not really clear on what I should be testing with uh, these sort of wagtail CMS type um, features, but I'll figure it out one of these days. So 
we'll leave it there as a friendly reminder. Uh, we probably won't need to define a view here because I'm going to follow a pattern I've been using where we define a model, a page model. Like, so the data um, will be a memorials page. It'll have one instance. And it'll act as a view as well. You create an instance of that page and you can override the, I think, well, in this case, uh, the git context would be probably sufficient to populate it. The page context based on some uh, filter criteria. We'll come back over here. You can see there are several fields we can filter by. So this will be one page instance for the memorials, like the directory sort of. And it'll have a title and intro, and then we'll have some page context that we'll populate when the page is rendered, which will be a list of memorials, paginated list, I should show. So we'll have to look at pagination. And keyword searchable. So if I say Phoebe. Now this. Drupal view is just using Ajax or some kind of a JavaScript. I will be using URL query string parameters. We'll have to look at that. So that you'll also be able to link to a specific search query. Like if we wanted to say Sacramento Friends meeting, show me all the memorial meetings, memorials for that meeting. Or Grass Valley, is there a Grass Valley? Yeah, this is my home meeting. Okay. We should at least have Mary Jorgensen also. Bob Barnes, a few people also. We're not, this is a big community though. It's and one, ed, one content editor who is trying to keep abreast with so many things about uh, the Western Front community. And by the way, I didn't uh, mention it, but Western Front is the official publication of Quakers in the Pacific, North Pacific, and Intermountain Yearly Meetings. And that basically means everything from United States, Western United States, Oregon, down to California and Mexico, east to, I think, Colorado, uh, New Mexico, west to Hawaii. It's a really big geographic area. Yeah, Nevada, I think is it. And um, many, many meetings in there. Many, many people. Okay, well, before we dig in too much, I'm just gonna get some tea really quick. Got some Assam tea. I'm learning more about tea. I had previously, I was looking for Irish breakfast, but it turns out Irish breakfast is not really a tea, I guess. It's like a mixture of teas or something. So the, the tea shop owner said, but you'll probably like this Indian tea, this Assam. Okay, okay, okay. So for this app, the initial app, we will have a model. And this makes um, this in the so that we can import in things. It's a Python module. And we want to add the memorials in our uh, settings. Here we are, memorials. So I think that's it. The main change is to initialize uh, a Django app. And, you know, basically Wagtail is built with Django. It's more or less a, a Django project with some really nice um, user experience and developer uh, enhancements. And the first thing we'll look at is the um, Wagtail page model. I'll be doing some copy and pasting from other um, other components of the website. I was just trying to think of which components I've got pagination on. We'll have to take a look at that. So, okay, it's quite a long virtual environment name, but alrighty then. I switched to poetry recently. I wouldn't mind just using pip and what 
Virtual or something like that. But in any case, uh, used Pippin for a while, had some troubles. Now I'm using Poetry. Seems to be going smooth. I think it'll be trade offs. I'm sure I'll encounter some gotchas. So I'm going to more of those apps. So let's see. I think I have pagination in the in the um, bookstore, which is the shop, the store, models, the product index page. Looks like I at this point in development. Hmm. I'll define it. Let me see how I populate this product index page. Book author, book, product. Here's where I'm overriding context for our product so I can uh, provide a shopping cart. But that's not quite what we're looking for. I'm going to scooch this a little bit more. Ah, oh, the store index page. What was I looking at then? Product index page. Okay. Uh, product index page is so that I can group products together in the back end here. So it's like really a placeholder. Hmm. Maybe not even necessary in any case. Here we are. The store index page. So we get the context and we just grab all the products from the products table as well as a shopping uh, an add to cart form. But not pagination. The media library probably has pagination. So here's the index page where we, I got these index pages because they're like the landing page where you display all the content. Uh, so in this case, the library index page will be displaying a bunch of library items up here. And those items have some metadata as well as an author and topic. So let's see, here's the get context. So this is pretty much, I'm going to follow exactly how this works. Let me see if that's pagination, pagination. Okay. okay, so I've got a faceted search, uh, which more or less we want, um, on the main website, we have these search facets here, which are really the same thing that we want to do with these memorials. So we would just call these search facets. So that's cool. How do I paginate? Hmm, let me just find where I've done pagination. Events, ah, okay. I'll probably have to go through this entire website and Add pagination, at least to the bookstore, the library. Now that I remember that, all right. So let's see, what is this? Events models, pi, magazine models, pi. Yeah, the magazine had pagination as well, so that we could display the latest of uh, articles. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it looks like it's a similar pattern. I suspect the events models is going to be a lot slimmer, easier to see in the file itself. It's just 75 lines. So I'll open that one up. The magazine has quite a lot uh, going on in there. So the two recipes I'm going to merge today for this memorials is going to be this pagination. here and uh, a faceted search and it looks like my query string um, 
is just following the Python, uh, sorry, the Django um, querying syntax. So you have a, um, a collection here. And then this traverses a foreign key relationship and grabs a field from that. This is reaching over into the for across the table boundary and grabbing a field out of there and filtering against it. So I think we'll be able to do something similar here. All right, let's start with the data model, defining that, and we'll get more into it. I'm just going to check the um, back end. The Drupal back in one moment. No, I don't want to save it. So we go to content, actually structure, content types, memorial minute, and actually I want to manage the fields. Ah, okay, so we call it biography. Yeah, this is a tricky one that we have um, fuzziness. We don't know all the time when people, you know, what day they were born or sometimes we don't even really know what year they were born. So that can be tricky. But with, um, you know, Django and whatnot, uh, it needs date time. Date time objects need to be valid. We don't need a time. We'll just use a date object. But in any case, uh, you can't leave, you can't omit um, elements my knowledge. If there's a fuzzy date, I could use that here. No, no I'm not even going to mess with this. Date. Date field represented date time date has a few extra optional mark, uh, arguments. All right, well, this is basically what we're going to want to use. So let's start at the top. The title is going to um, come from the Wagtail page model. We get that by default. So these are going to stay open. Let's go ahead and open our models pi in the memorials so we're going to be inheriting from page so there's some good stuff in there oh i could even do just page model classes i'm not sure what that does all right and this will be called Memorial. Add new memorial. So the title we'll get for free. I'll just quickly peek at that. It's quite a lot that the Wagtail page model does. Every time I look at it, I learn a little bit more. Hmm. And we've recently updated uh, Wagtail. I think this has changed. Oh, the abstract page. Here's the page. So here's our path. materialized path trees. So the basic, my basic understanding is Wagtail page model is hierarchical. Every page has a parent uh, up to the root page. And uh, you can have sibling pages, so it's a strict hierarchy. By default, you get a title and some auto slug and some revisioning related Fields, search engine, uh, they have this show in menus thing that to my knowledge isn't really used. I installed a plugin in the last live coding session that uh, we need, that's using this now to allow end users to auto or manually 
uh, create menus with drag and drop. It's pretty cool. Alrighty then. You can publish in the future. You can automatically unpublish. I mean, it comes with a lot. And it's search engine. Oh, I need to be adding search fields. I forgot about that. And here's a new um, feature they added uh, at my request. I was really uh, impressed by the um, receptiveness, receptivity of the um, the Wagtail Core community. Uh, I just said that sometimes if I'm defining a landing page, I only want one, like a home page, for example. I only want one instance of a home page. Uh, the reason I define that in code is so that the editor can change the homepage content at runtime. We don't want to hard code that. They would want to change the title and the homepage uh, intro text, for example, or pick featured articles, things like that. So this max count allows you to just specify that. Very cool. So this is why we're inheriting from the Wagtail core page model as often as we can. And we have this intro field intro text equals, I believe, I want to be consistent here. No, it's a rich text field, I think we do. It's a rich text field. That way it allows uh, markdown. It gives you a little woozy wig editor. And let's import that. Forget where that comes from. Edit, no, 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 no. Fields, rich text. Wagtail core fields import rich text. I will type that out. Models, permissions, query, rich text, signal handler, signals, a lot of good stuff going on here. All right, so we've got an intro. Max count equals one. We will only have, oh, wait, 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 wait. This is the memorial index page, which is gonna show the memorials on there. And I will override the context in a moment. Then I need content panels. Let me make sure I do this correct. Page content panels. Plus and then a list, and this list is just gonna have one item and it's, looking like I'm not using this, so I will comment that out for the time being. And what do we, edit handlers. Edit handlers. Mag, right to admin, edit handlers, there we are, import field panel. Very cool. Just looking around to see what else is there. A field panel, it's just going to tell Wagtail to display a, a specific field when it automatically generates the edit form on the admin UI. So Wagtail really um, simplifies Django development uh, it auto-generates forms for you. It automatically generates views and routes for all of your back-end um, administration, content management. Uh, the Django project comes by default with an admin, the Django admin, but it's not meant for end users. It even says that in the documentation. It's meant for like super users. Hey, what's up? Let me try to say your name real quick. Is identical. All right. Hey, yo. Wagtail looks like Django with more and more features. It's really cool. Yeah. It's really like my, the way I summarize it for people who've done web development a little bit is uh, basically WordPress for Django. It's pretty, pretty slick.
I'll show you the website real quick. Because it's essentially bringing a content management framework to the Django, which is just more general purpose web development platform, as you're probably aware. Uh, so that's why they call it Wagtail CMS. It's a uh, CMS for modern websites. Um, the admin section is automatically created for you. You just define things in code. You customize menus and content types and stuff. It doesn't come with any content types out of the box, so it's not quite WordPress-like. You know, for example, if you run WordPress on a website, then you get a blog right away with pages and blog posts. But Wagtail doesn't assume any of that for you. Uh, but it's not hard to get a, like set up a blog with uh, Wagtail. Um, it's also, if you've worked with WordPress, um, I'm trying to remember the name of this. WordPress now has switched the way they manage content and uh, it's like basically a JSON array. Uh, all their content are kind of chunks. Uh, what is that called? Mm -hmm. Spammy kind of WordPress ecosystem. The reason I got out of WordPress development was just the ecosystem is so corrupted with just commercial stuff. Gutenberg. So basically, it's like a you block-based editor. You put content blocks together, and you can extend it with new types, new blocks. Same thing with um, Wagtail. Uh, it's essentially, and blocks are just like, well, they can be really anything. You know, HTML is a block, a lot of block-based um, declarative programming, more or less. So you have like divs and paragraphs and things like that and images. And so these are just chunks of HTML and JavaScript, but they can be as small as like a header, you know, or a paragraph or something, but as big as like a carousel, an image carousel or, you know, an embedded P, uh, PDF file, or it doesn't really matter in the uh, frame. Uh, you just kind of, you know, it's like basically web components in, in some loose usage of that word. Uh, Wagtail also gives you image uh, scaling and cropping, as well as you can select the focal point so that when it auto crops things to fit into your content, it'll ensure to, it'll be sure to include the, the focal point of your image. Uh, and it's, I haven't done anything with charts. It doesn't really do charting out of the box, but this, I guess, more illustrates that um, the dashboard you can customize and um, add buttons to it and add custom HTML and JavaScript so you could render charts. It also has, I guess it gives you REST, if not GraphQL, out of the box. I haven't really gone into this, so you can build apps on top of a, a Wagtail website without too much work. So it's really cool, really cool project. Uh, it's got built-in Elasticsearch support. I'm not really going that realm. I'm just gonna use Postgres for our um, search. We don't anticipate having a lot on having a lot of content. Let's see. Yep, so let's get back to it. So yeah, if you're, if you're wanting to do uh, some, well, what we're, we are building a community website and online magazine uh, publishing platform. It's an, for a nonprofit organization called Western Friend. Uh, this is a Drupal website that's been under development, incremental development for about five years. So we had a kind of big vision when we started and we more or less built the features for that and then slowly added a few more features and removed stuff and added Drupal modules and stuff. and it, it's built with Drupal 7, and we realized that um, you know Drupal 8 is out, and we're going to have to migrate that to that. And but then some of the Drupal modules we're using don't support 8, and particularly this one core module called CBCRM doesn't support Drupal 8. So we were like, well, if it's going to be a significant amount of effort and perhaps a long timeline for Drupal 8. Um, and we're feeling the crunch. Technically, we need to actually migrate because um, our server's running an old version of Ubuntu, and um, there's some phantom bugs in this site that I just don't even know how to troubleshoot. So we were like, well, what else? What is another option? Just we have to, you know, something to compare. And we took a deep look at um, the question of, you know, what's the alternative, and uh, including, you know, the underlying language, PHP versus Python versus other popular languages, and a bunch of things, and that's it including the fact that we're probably gonna have to get into the code a little bit more. 
for maintenance reasons and uh, customization. So at the end of the day, we said, well, let's try Python ecosystem, Django, and then the Wagtail CMS to build an online magazine page where this is a nonprofit organization, but their main, uh, I guess the main revenue stream is just um, selling subscriptions to this online community magazine that is published every two months. The most recent three issues are um, pro you get the subscribers get full access to those. And then all the archive issues going back to 1929 are publicly available. Everybody can view those, including this deep archive when it was called Friends Bulletin. And this is what goes to 1929. And it's hosted on the Internet Archive. See, it's identical. It says, I'm not a web guy, but Django has a really great ecosystem. Yeah, I've been uh, noticing that just in, uh, about Python in general, but yeah, Django. Yeah, and Django is a web development framework. Yeah, if you, if you have really a common use case of a content-oriented website, content-oriented project, you know, even things like forums, and to a certain extent, uh, more web app type things like chat, um, Django can take you a long way. It's got real-time capabilities now with uh, channels. Uh, if you're, and I highly recommend using a, a relational database unless you know that there's some compelling reason you absolutely need to get uh, a document database. Uh, I think that hype train has gone past and relational databases are stronger than ever. So yeah, things like that. And Django's been around, it's not a fly-by-night. I've had some, I've been burnt a little bit in the JavaScript ecosystem using JavaScript frameworks that just come and go and churn and evaporate. And it's just like, well, it's not a good feeling to invest in something and then the community goes on to the next new sh shiny sort of thing. A little bit frustrating. But I don't sense that ethos from Django, although it does need stewards. So... We've got this index page. So this is going to be the page. So I, is identical. What are you uh, interested in building? If, you, if you're not web, what do you do software development or what's your, uh, what's your main pursuit? And we have the intro text actually. So let's go ahead then and run this migration and add this page and get it in the navigation menu. Let's see if it, that's working. Okay. One step at a time. Make migrations. This is a really cool thing. Uh, not many web frameworks have rich migrations built in, baked in, and auto migrations at that. It'll generate them for you, and even notice when you rename fields and stuff like that. Now, I won't do everything for you. It won't uh, necessarily convert all your data if you're uh, renaming field and, and converting the data type or, or some kind of more elaborate, but basic stuff it handles. We got that migrated in our database has been updated with a new field. Let's go ahead and run that server again. We'll hop over there and um, it's identical if you're interested in building your own uh, web uh, type project, perhaps with Django or Wagtail, you can feel free to check out our code. We're open source on GitHub. And uh, isn't identical has sent me their GitHub profile, let's take a look. Okay, lots and lots of activity. 2,000 commits in the last year, a lot of Python going on. What is the most active repo? 73 commits and 10 repos. BRM, bicycle repayment, oh. Oh, I thought it was gonna be like a, a CMS for bicycle repair people. Rewrite Python sources. Okay, that looks uh, hmm. looks pretty complicated. Probably above my pay grade. <laughs> I'm not that good. Uh, let's see. Okay, you're committing directly to CPython. Simple platformer about nothing. That's funny. Ooh, this U import is kind of cool. I'm using Flake Eight for that though. Is that going to be good enough for that? Hmm. 
<clears throat> Excuse me. Code review review framework. Pretty cool. A lot of a lot of projects here. What's your favorite? Uh, what are a couple of your favorite Python projects? Oh, okay, so the um, I forgot where that went. The import inspector is under development and it's going to automatically fix your unused imports. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's always good to look to learn more about the Python ecosystem. There's some really cool stuff going on. All right, so we're migrated. Let's go ahead and hop over to the admin section now. Um, so here, here's a cool constraint. How do I add this page now that I've created this memorial page? Um, if I go to add a child page, basically long short of it, I can't add it anywhere because I've put, I've, um, put strict rules about where content can exist on the site. So in order to add the memorials page under the home page, I need to tell Wagtail that it's allowed to go there. So if I go to my home page, uh, sub page types. One more on the next page. Now if I refresh this, because welcome is our home page is what's going on here. So just so you know, I should uh, think about this. Yeah, I think those are fine. There we go. Now Memorial Index page shows up. Memorials. Oh, but our intro text is not there. There it goes. So I hadn't saved with the content panel in there. So yeah, you can see how Wagtail just auto generated that form if you caught that. It's a pretty slick feature. So. Let's actually grab just the memorial, excuse me, memorial text from here. And close out some unused, unused tabs because I get myself confused. And uh, it's identical says, this Wagtail admin system UI is clearly better than the Django default. Yeah, I agree on that fully. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any places it could use there's a couple little weird things, um, but they're so edge case that uh, I think they're going to be improved. The user, there's a really high focus on user experience in this development. Yes, and this is this is also again designed for non-admin type users, so you can have just you know content managers who aren't so tech savvy uh, working in here and feeling comfortable. Which is why we chose it. Uh, not that the, I mean, yeah, honestly, the editor of this magazine's, you know, not super tech savvy, tech savvy enough to publish an online magazine and stuff like that, but not their uh, main cup of tea, so to speak. So I'll have my cup of tea while I do some wagtail development. And the developer experiences were, I've been really impressed also. Things are pretty straightforward. Only a few lines of code get you quite far along. Okay, so let's commit these and then get the next part is um, adding the memorial model, which will be the memorial minute. And then finally, we will link them up. I will create a page context. Let me think here for one second. Oh yeah, so you see I just created and published this page. So let's view it live. All right, so here, actually, let me follow through with what I'm doing here. So we're just gonna go ahead and add this HTML file, we need uh, to define a template in order to display the content. This is standard stuff, new file. Templates, memorials. The template directories are namespace with the app, so it keeps things organized. And then here, we're gonna import um, extends, our base. I think it's extends. Uh, oh, let's read this. And we will add content block. 
Uh, is identical? Are you familiar with uh, Django templating at all? Have you took? Have you um, worked with Django much? Block. Let's go. Content. I'm kind of learning all this stuff. Uh, I've been doing this for over a year now, though, but I'm still learning quite a lot every day. I've read a couple books on Django and Python, but it's not until I really start doing it that I really learn that the things really sink in and start to become muscle memory. But still, I have uncertainty. Let's see if this is going to work. So we'll do H1. but does not exist. Memorial index page. Now I just added a file on disk. For some reason the, you have to restart the server. And when you added file on disk, sometimes, here we go. All right, so we got page title. And uh, okay, so what this did, let me just double check. It's identical to what I built, it's a simple social media th like thing, but it was just a demo thing. Yeah, so you got, experience with the basics though like the template inheritance you know and the blocks you know, to display overridable content i'm not good at web dev well i'm not super good at web dev either honestly but uh if you have a good framework it makes you good i think to be honest this just propels your development is following conventions <laughs> i have been working on uh so there's different shades of web dev. I've done like WordPress deployments and content management and installing plugins and doing a little bit of like, you know, creating my SQL database, populating it, backing it up, server commands, point and click development through uh, Drupal for, you know, I've done that for like 10 years, but only in the last year have I done Python web development. Although for around uh, four years now, I've been doing JavaScript full stack development, which is basically web development. So yeah, yeah, it's been a learning journey. I'm still not super, super awesome at it, but yeah. This has been the most refreshing experience that working with Django and Python. Cool. And a sprinkle of, HT, uh, of JavaScript, because it is, is still useful. And it's kind of interesting that the JavaScript I was learning in doing Meteor JS development um, was sort of more cutting edge JavaScript and Meteor does a lot of magic for you. But at the same time, I wasn't learning some basics of the language that I've had to relearn, um, particularly the front end stuff and when I want to work with that in, in, uh, excuse me, in uh, Django. All right, so we got the page title displaying. Let's go ahead and uh, display the Ah, the intro field, that's right. So for this one, so page, intro, we're gonna, it's a rich text field, so let's just split it without the rich text and show you this happens. You're like, whoa, my, show me the raw HTML. What's going on? This is for security. And I think there's this, uh, in order to use this helper, I need to, Import it. <laughs> I have to remember how to import this. Mm, where's the place I'm using this? Well, pretty much every page is using this. If I just go to the home page, for example, template load wagtail core tags. That's what we need. So I'm going to type it. I do a lot of copy and pasting stuff to save myself a few keystrokes, but then that means I, I don't really learn. I forget things. I don't get the muscle memory. So wag, this rich text comes from the Wagtail core tags module and will format the text for me. Very cool. I like it. Yeah, Python, whoa, that's a cool Python emoji. I've never seen that one. Anthon 63 Python, okay. Huh, never seen that. Nice. Okay, so let's go ahead and commit this stuff. 
Step one. What did I change here? Oh yeah. So. Initial memoir, memoir index page. And I'll just go ahead and add this to the whole thing because it's really part of the same. Cool. All right, we'll come back to the template. And I hope my other templates are still up there. Yeah, they're hanging out. Now we're going to add the model. Now, one thing is the all this content is going to be migrated from Drupal to to Wagtail. It's going to be like some Python scripting I'll be doing hopefully on live stream as well. But I, so I have to at least map the fields to matching um, fields in Wagtail. I don't think we're using these tags. That's kind of weird. Title's already in there. First name, last name, date of birth, date of death, Boolean dates are approximate, and then a foreign key, and biography, or, well, we could call it minute. It's identical, says, yeah, that could be a problem if you don't use the same table layouts for both Drupal and Django. Yeah, and I think it's also a little bit of an opportunity to clean up the semantics in our data model. Like Drupal likes to f uh, prefix everything with field, and it it does some weirdness. I think um, each field is its own own table or something. I don't know, something weird like that. I don't know. Like I said, I don't, I don't peek under the hood of how Drupal is organized very much. I think that's how it does it. Like every field you define is its own table, and uh, so that you can define custom fields through the user interface, rather than just modeling them properly, as like either a class or defining some sort of point-and-click uh, SQL designer. Okay, there's a uh, an article on migrating Drupal to Django oh, from 2015. But that's a cool thing. Um, for the most part, you know, Wagtail, Django, and Python, they don't change that fast. And this is exactly what we're doing. We're coming from Drupal 7. Let's see. Choosing stack. Entity relationship model. All right, so you just get your data as JSON. I could probably even do some of the mapping, the field mapping, just right in the, uh, when I define the Drupal view, the JSON view, because it lets you override things like labels or whatever. So I, I might be able to avoid a little bit of Python parsing for that, but even then I'm not too worried about that. I got to figure out, um, relationships uh, so the order of adding things and so I think I'll have to do basically if I have a one entity that depends on another entity or has a re reference to that I'll have to make sure the other entity is created first and then somehow at uh, when I insert the the first entity so to speak the primary entity that re depends on the secondary entity as a reference to it, I'll have to then look up the secondary entity to get the proper foreign key. So that'll be a manual scripting th thing. I've been kind of turning it over in my head. I'll, I think I'll be able to figure it out.
Hmm. And it says Wagtail, or yeah, Wagtail is going to give us a performance increase too, huh? Wow. Yeah, and this is basically why we all, one of the main reasons we went with Wagtail and Django and Python ecosystem is just, it's like becoming the, you know, next to JavaScript, I think the most popular programming language. Uh, and I'm using Python a lot and the ecosystem is main reason why. So we were doing language comparisons, but even you had Django and Drupal. Oh, I wonder what that is. This spike was pretty crazy. All right, thanks for sharing that article. Let's see, backwards compatibility is a major thing for big open source projects. Yeah, that's right. So I think that's why we can have confidence of most of this working. Uh, I don't think I'll be able to use it verbatim. Obviously, you know, usually you can't copy and paste stuff from Stack Overflow or these things, but uh, I will read it very much more closely when that time comes. I, uh, we hope to be doing this migration next month. I hope so. We've been writing this a year, for the last year, and uh, well, we thought we'd have it done in six months. My, that was my rough estimate, but nah, it didn't happen. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Oh, did I just close that? Other, what was I doing now? What was I doing? Nope. This. All right. All right, so the home model's good. Yes. Closing that out. The events model I'm leaving open so I can learn about pagination. This template I'm going to leave open so I can display the context. How do I just, is there a keyboard shortcut for switching tabs or scrolling tabs in VS Code? What uh, IDE do you, oh wait, what's that it says? In Python it took like three to four versions to remove just a single unused function and that's pretty rare. Yeah, but, and also how many, <laughs> yeah, that's right, that's right. Trying to think. I haven't had any major deprecations um, that have uh, caused me any grief that I can really think of. But in any case, yeah, it took a long, long, long time though to get people on the Python 3 train, and there's still this night <laughs> unanimity there. All right, so where are we at? A library model, let me leave and open for reference. Let me just organize my tabs a little better. There we are. So then my working tabs are easier to get at. All right, adding a new uh, class here. Memorial, it's gonna inherit from page also because, because should it actually, should it inherit from page? It will be displayed as a page. So then yeah, it's not as simple as that. Sometimes you, uh, I have displayed things as pages, but they didn't need all the like, accoutrements that come along with the wagtail page but you know we're gonna have a slug here we're gonna have the titles the, the only gotcha because well yeah it's a little bit of a gotcha actually to be honest the title has to be submitted has to be filled in when you submit the form it's a required field in the wagtail page model but people's name, people, we don't have like title, uh, not in the sense of a page title. Like we have, you know, doctor or whatever, but that's not what that means. That page, this title field is like the page title. So in order to get around that, and Wagtail doesn't let you define page models without a title field. Similarly with Drupal, that was one of my main annoyances with Drupal is everything has to, to have a title. So either I just define a standard Django model here, which means that I have to handle slugs and uniqueness, but that not, might not be too hard. There's actually already a uh, module in our project where you can define a slug field and it handles, uh, it's an auto slug field, so it creates it for you. I think it'll even prevent duplicates. It'll append a dash, you know, number. And if I go that route, then I need to define a view and a, and a URL mapping because that's all manual. That's stuff that Wagtail does for you automatically. Wait, 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 doesn't it? Yes, yeah, more or less. Yeah. 
Hmm. Let's see, is it Nichols says, I'm using Genie. It is the simplest and active de uh, developed IDE I've found. It's really light and doesn't require much computing power, which is good because my low grade system. It offers partial autocomplete, like just complete some standard library things and class functions in the context of the file. It does, doesn't support third party libraries or argument definitions, which I'm okay with. Yeah, I gotta say though, being able to click on that and hit F12 and go to the definition of this uh, library inside my Python environment, that's pretty cool. And that's actually a really good way for me to start learning the framework and things. And similarly, there's just auto completions happening, inline documentation happening when you have a, a rich uh, IDE that can, uh, you know, inspect your entire environment. It can auto complete names from other files. I don't even know the extent of what all it can do, but I mean, yeah, that's what sold me on VS Code. I was using, I've used Genie in the past. Um, I was using Atom for a while doing JavaScript development, and that was pretty good. But I didn't realize what it's like to have a like an IDE until uh, actually I tried PyCharm. And uh, then I started learning a little bit more about, you know, the having an integrated terminal with um, that can activate virtual environments and even knows the difference between poetry, pipinv, and standard requirements text, stuff like that. Knows where to look for your virtual environment. Integrated debugging, which actually I'm having trouble setting up. Uh, you know, tons of tons of plugins, extensions, but yeah. It, I don't know how resource hungry it is. I could look at that. What is the case this guard? I'm not, um, I mean, my computer's not super skimpy, but I have eight gigs of RAM, 7.7 .7 gigs of RAM, and OBS is using 400 megs, and I have Firefox running. 300 megs, and then it looks like I've got a web tab that's also Firefox. My Chrome for development is using 128 megs, and my VS Code is only running 40 megs of RAM. 100 megs if you look at shared memory. So really, it's not that, like, not super hungry for what it brings, I think. You know, it's less, it's using less than Chrome, and I'm doing much more with it in this Chrome window here. I think Chrome, why, why is Chrome eating up so much? I wonder, maybe I have just too many tabs open. Huh, strange, strange. Yes, uh, it's identical, so if I need definition, I just use Python dash minus n inspect module colon definition. Yeah, yeah but hitting one button. Uh, it's a lot easier to remember and to type. <laughs> I'm more of a CPU rather than RAM. I have eight gigs and some good s SSD, solid state disk, but there is no option for me to upgrade my CPU, which I suffer. Uh -huh. So yeah, that's true. Let me see there. I didn't check that one. That's true. Usually I think I get bogged down with RAM. I get more worried about RAM. How can I tell? Well, again, all right, so idle right now now vs code must be using chrome or something underneath it or because it says it's using zero cpu how is that even possible oh here we are no nope. i've got a couple of code instances up uh, okay here we are but none of them says are using cpu <laughs> why because it's not doing anything i guess That's too, that's weird. Do you want to, do you believe me here? I can show you this. Maybe you can help me interpret this. How do I do this? Window? Not window capture, it's, uh, yeah, window capture. System monitor. Uh, 
and I will add my system monitor. See that? That's weird. But LibreBoot is limited with old slow PCs. Yeah, and then you have that, is it an Intel um, processor? Because then you have the whole thing that they've been really slowed down quite a lot. Yep, using KDE. But yeah, for some reason, this VS Code's not using much CPU or I'm filtering on the wrong process or something. I don't know, I don't know. My top CPU is this web tab, which that's Firefox, and I'm not even using Firefox for development purposes, that's relating to streaming. And then Python back here. But yeah, I mean, case this card is using more than my IDE. That's pretty cool. Pretty funny. Where are we at? I'll delete that little thing from my LS CPU grep model name model two four gigahertz two point four gigs. How many cores? Core two duo. So you have a two core two point four gigahertz machine. All right, I can do that on mine, I don't know. Actually, what I'm running. Model name, Intel Core TM i5-7400, three gigahertz. So, I don't know what that means. Let me, I can check. My sysguard again. I think that's four cores. Yeah, it's a four core. I got this. It's a desktop. I'm not running a laptop, and I do development on here. So, uh, and actually, some this. Well, I do development for a living, and I also have a co-founded a, a kind of a, a cooperative, and we do software development. So one of the so the company actually bought this for me, but we didn't splurge on it. It's not super. Um, top into the top of the line thing, but you know, uh, it's really good to have a good development machine, and so I'm glad that we were able to invest in that because actually the running Meteor doing Meteor development was probably more CPU and memory intensive than this what I'm doing with VS Code and um, with Django. So I was like actually feeling the pain of having a slow CPU, and then if I would want to you know, stream or whatever, which has been really nice. Uh, no way that was happening. I think I was maxing out. Let's see what this is. I'm gonna open this in my other browser. All right, system monitor. So this is, is identical as CPU. Just for comparison's sake, I'll pop that over. Well, I don't know, it might be some private stuff there, so I'll just open it over. So Genie is using nine megs. Oh, so slim. Hey, cute creator. I've been actually interested in uh, doing cute development. I've been looking at that and I have some some ideas brewing. Um, so yeah, maybe that'd be a good, some sessions uh, on here. PyCute, PyCute 5. Do you ever use a QGIS, QGIS? In fact, I have this thing over here open literally right now. Looking at the QGIS cookbook, brewing up some ideas, but I got to uh, tread cautiously with how I initiate this project because I'm hoping to turn it into uh, open source, fully open source project. But I'm hoping to turn it into sort of like a long term effort and potentially a livelihood. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just a brainchild right now, but. Uh, yeah, I don't want to say too much more about it. Stay tuned though if you're interested in doing some Pi Q, QGIS plugin or uh, development and or Django REST GIS related stuff, geographic information systems. Uh, I might be able to start delving into that in the next like six months, something around that line, timeline. <clears throat> Fully open source though. Everything I do, I try to do open source. 
is identical said no i don't use cute I'll do much cute development i'm using cute creator for a project i'm fixing some bugs oh what's the project is it open source so a memorial oh yeah so i'm back at this quandary though man i gotta figure it out i think i'm just gonna use the the wagtail page model but now i've got to look at my javascript and here i had to use a kind of hacky some hacky javascript to allow me to submit a, a form with a t missing title field and it auto creates the title field but it doesn't slugify it oh, man, what was i where was i doing this chatterino number two whoops paste a Rooney chat client for Twitch TV what oh no way like I could be chatting in a cute application hmm but it probably doesn't let me do see my activity feed and stuff like that does it chatterino dot com well it, oh does this run in VS code I don't know if I would want that. <laughs> maybe I would, maybe I would. No, it wouldn't run in that silly because it's made in cute. That was a silly question, but uh, this is pretty nice looking. A seagull. Lyric. I, I was watching Lyric's uh, casts for a while. He was uh, using GTA 5 stuff. He's a pretty funny dude. This is pretty cool. So, I don't know if I'd be able to use it for my stream though. Good to know about. And it's C++. I wouldn't have to build it. Hey, these build instructions need to be updated. What's the latest LTS? No, it is. All right, never mind. You have this new emote and it's pretty cool. 1910. 1910 is LTS. That's what I'm running is 1910. But I didn't think I don't think it's LTS. Okay, is that where you got the Python? A uh, not uh, Anthon 63 Python. Okay, emoji. That one just totally does not work for me. Bummer, man. All right, let me find this JavaScript. All right, I just gotta focus for one second. My ADD brain lets me get off on so many. Ah, oh, from a subscription to somebody else's uh, chatter and you can pull those emojis around with you from their own, from other um, channels or whatever I mean. That's cool. I think I remember where I had this little JavaScript hack. It's not the most, uh, it's not that bad of code, but it is just an unfortunate side effect. So under the, under the uh, cont uh, contact model, the templates, static, contact person, slug JS. Cause yeah, here's the problem. When we add a contact person, people, I need to add the person index page. <clears throat> I 
I have to revisit this. It's not f super fresh in my mind right now, but now that I've got this index page, which is just like a folder basically you, that you can store content under, in this case, people. Now I can go to our contacts app, which is just a custom menu I defined and add a person. Now here's the deal. It's, uh, people have a given name and a family name. This is really the same thing with the Memorial Minute. These uh, memorials here are of people and they have, uh, you know, a title here field which is generated from this first name, last name, given name, family name. And let's see. Uh, by the way, where do you live? I live in Finland. Where do you live in is identical. So it's it's like the this is a tricky one. Yeah, the title field is not so meaningful, I guess. I can just hide it, but the slug field will not let the form submit without being valid. Or auto generated. I guess it's auto generated on the client side or something. I'm not sure what's going on. So what I had to do is add this hack generate auto slug for context. And every time the thing changes, it's got to do that. You know what I just realized is um, I can probably reuse this contact model. This is a little bit out on the branch, but uh, so basically if a memorial minute ha already has a foreign key relationship to the memorial meeting, which is one of our contact types, m instead of adding a person to a meeting, right? That's a, so we're already dealing with a foreign key there. Why not? And this is where I'd be deviating from the way it's designed in Drupal and I have to work things out, but uh, why not have a foreign key to the actual person? Then I'd have to add these metadata fields so it's I can't it's not so clear cut and then we would just essentially select the person the meeting and then the minute the biography huh. uh, is identical it says I live in Turkey oh I thought you're a native speaker your English is pretty clear and good cool thanks I am I grew up in Kansas United States and then I have a Western American English dialect, which is one of the more easy to interpret of the English. There are many, many English dialects. Something I think my analogy is that sometimes English, uh, well, for example, after the Norman invasion, English became like a really mixed up language, but then as English has spread and influence around the world, as like the English uh, developed world has, for for historical reasons, became uh, predominant, English has mixed in in different nations, and um, all these dialects have emerged. And sometimes they get really it's hard to understand, even if you just listen to some th people in, like, you know, even in the United Kingdom, some of those dialects are really difficult. But as the English language and people, English speaking people migrated into the United States and then Western, towards Western United States, somehow the language got like smoothed over and simplified. Like we just like took a lot of the uh, extra vowels out of things and uh, simplified things just somehow through the process, maybe like a little bit of laziness. I think somehow uh, laziness is a big factor in, in lang language evolution. So. Uh, yeah, I've just heard from many different, several different people that, like in particular, my English is easy to understand, but I think it's the dialect, really, honestly. That's easy. Cool. So thank you. I appreciate it. Hearing that, I'm able. I'm clear. Now what's not clear though is how I should. Like English here in Finland is is kind of a funny one because. Finnish is a phonetic language, so every every vowel and every consonant you just pronounce the same way every time you see it. But English, you know, particularly since it's like half Germanic, 
and like half French, but more or less then, um, is so inconsistent. And sometimes, you, you know, a lot of times you don't even say particular letters. Uh, so it's just funny to hear people who haven't, who, who their like background, their educational background is in like written or reading, reading English, and particularly coming from a phonetic background. And I've also been uh, noticing myself starting to pronounce things in more of a Finnish manner, and my grammar is getting a little bit more confused. Is the Turkish language, is that a phonetic language, or I don't know much about that, actually. What's the, what's the language family? What language do you speak? Uh, it's identical. Is it just Turkish or something else? Huh, yeah, I suppose it would be. Really, let's see, what's the official language in Turkey? Dang, there's several languages there. Turkish. Kermanji, Zaza, Laz, Kabardian, Cherkis, Bosnian, Syrian Arabic, various others. Wow. Huh. In Finland, there's two languages, basically, well, three, but two national languages. We have Suomi and Svenska, Swe uh, so Finnish and Swedish, and then English is just everywhere. We have only Turkish around here as official languages. The others are spoken by minorities, so sort of like more ethnic languages or regional. Are they all mostly in the same family, or can you hear similarities between the languages, or are they like very distinct? And I'm not really quite sure how I should best proceed here. I think the obvious answer is for me to just add these fields. The thing is though, add these fields in their own model. What we're aiming for with this new website is to be more integrative where possible so that, for example, if I'm viewing the profile page for a person in our contacts, which are people who've come in contact with the organization and have contributed in some public fashion, like publishing an article uh, or something in our multimedia library, but not like a private person who's like made a donation or subscribed. Those are different. Um, in a way, these memorial minutes could be considered at least related to that. If somebody's published, if I'm viewing either an article in magazine, article and I click the author name and I want to see other, you know, I'll see other articles that they've contributed or library, media library items and potentially and their, um, their meeting could come up and potentially the uh, memorial minute. So it would give us a little bit of a more of a biographical view of that person than if I am to just create this as its own standalone content type without any relationship, which I'm prone to do. I'm sort of leaning towards that is because that's the way it's implemented on the Drupal website. I should talk with Mary about this feature. So for right now, I will just implement this as a standalone model because in order to have a foreign key relationship, I would then need to introduce these fields to the person model, which might be okay. So now we're back to this slug. How do I get this slug? How to generate this slug? Do I use a wagtail page model? Or do I create a custom Django view and then just use an auto slug field? 
which is fine. The last time I did that though, I ended up rewriting the code back to to using a, well, let me think here. Man, <laughs> such seemingly simple decisions are so hard sometimes. This, I basically have three choi th choice between three major major possibilities. This identical says regarding the language spoken in Turkey. I can say they are similar, but I seldomly hear them. They aren't very popular around the west of Turkey. I heard Finnish and Turkish are related in some way by Ural Al Altec hypothesis. Ah, okay. Yeah. How do you say Finno Ergic Ugric peoples Hungary. Not Turkey. This is what I've heard. It's more similar to Hungarian. Suomi language or just Finnish language. Huh. All right. Twenty five million people. Hungarian, a little bit of Estonian, but I think it's probably even closer to Hungarian than Estonian from what I can gather. I don't speak the language very well at all, to be honest. So I'm, this is just hearsay. But yeah, I haven't heard Turkish. Burel Altaic hypothesis. I put tension. Finnic languages, hmm. Turkish, the Turkic languages. Yeah, I haven't heard of this, but the Sami languages, hmm. Hungarian, Estonian. It's quite interesting. Karelian. Well, dang, I don't want to get so stymied on this simple task. Looks like this is a rejected hypothesis. I just heard it during the high school. Oh, okay, cool. All right, well, just thinking aloud, sort of my instinct is telling me that, you know, this title field is superfluous. It's like not even really important. And I can generate the title as the string method of the model, right? So I present the, uh... now we'll want to search, we'll want it to be indexed, search indexed. So that's one thing. If I inherit from the wagtail page model, it's easy to define search indexing. So that's a pro. It's gonna want to do the auto scaffolding. Uh, slug thing. I can share this. I can put this in a like a common uh, module path, something. For right now, I can just copy and paste it and be silly. Let's do that. Let's use the page model. Keep things consistent. Uh, even though I have this superfluous title field, which what did I do with the title for the contact person? Let me just double check here. Person given name. I guess I just hide the title field. And then on save, I set the title to the full name. Full name is a method that just concatenates the uh, first and last name. It's a model method. 
Oh, actually, I didn't even define it as a model method. Well, okay. Where did I define that? I had to have defined it as a model method. Oh, I see, I see. No, didn't even because it's just a F string. <laughs> you don't need a method for that. Unless you're wanting to display it in the UI in some way, uh, then you could have a, a full name uh, field attached to the model, which I don't see why that would be a bad thing. All right, all right, all right. Cool, let's move forward. This is quite a, okay, uh, by the way, I gotta go work on some homework. It was really nice to chat with you. See you on next stream. Yeah, thanks for stopping in. It's identical, it's been nice to, get off topic a little bit with you and explore some cool stuff about languages and, and culture and whatnot. Hope to see you around. All right, let's do this page model. Just putting all these fields in there and then copy paste some um, JavaScript. I'll see if finding a better place for it to live. Uh, I'll look that up towards the end of the, the session. It's looking like I'm only gonna be able to do one feature today, unfortunately. So, so we have given name and family name. Now for these, I'm gonna do a little bit of copy and pasting. Because we wanna be consistent with given name and family name across the project. Models is not defined, so now I'll uncomment that. Very cool. Yeah, I'd be curious to see where some of the other stream, uh, either lurkers or people just checking it out, where you all are from too. I'm kind of, it's not too late. It's only eight o'clock Eastern European time. So I'm thinking most people here are from around Central Europe, Eastern Europe, something like that. Who knows though? It's your evening. Evening Twitchers, Twitch viewers. All right, so we got that. Now we need some custom fields, further fields for dates of birth and death. It's just a date field. I think that's, I don't think, uh, I think, I'm sorry, I'll complete this thought. Wagtail just uses the Django date field and gives us a date select widget based on that. Which is pretty cool. You'll see that in a minute if I've got my, everything lined up here. I think they should be required fields. You need a date of birth and death, even if approximate. So then dates are approximate. Boolean field, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now here's a foreign key relationship. It's, yeah, every memorial minute should come from one meeting. We should say biography before that though. Let me see if this is actually a biography or, yeah, more or less these are biographies, but it's the minute. And then the user interface, we're displaying it as minute. And these are technically memorial minutes or memorials. Hmm. Well. Uh, this is a rich text field. Although this should never be blank, otherwise it's not a memorial minute. All right, and then the meeting. And this is, uh, again, it's a foreign key. I think a foreign key is all we need here.
I'll actually change this to Memorial Minute. That reflects what we're, what we're recording here. So for this, we will use These are only added to Wagtail page models, but they're specifically min, uh, meetings, sorry. So I just moved that to static. I can actually include the same JavaScript in multiple places in the um, multiple edit fields. So that's probably the easiest way to do it. Just put it right there in the static root instead of static slash contact slash JS. So static slash JS and yeah, reuse the code. Sounds good to me. I'll do that while it's fresh. No, I'll do that in a minute so I can follow through. ADD is a tricky one. You don't know when to act. foreign key thing uh, so yeah we're not gonna be relating to person meeting yeah so I think I should just point it straight to this model the foreign key can only be linked to these so Okay, so then to undelete. Uh, yeah. Undelete, we would want to actually protect it. We don't want to allow delete. I've, I've thought this one through before. Django undelete. Okay. Uh, do nothing, set null, default, protect. I think it's protect. Models not protect. Delete option. Protect. Yeah, that's pretty straightforward. That way, if this uh, meeting has a bunch of content related to it, you don't want to just uh, it would um, delete the other content, and you don't want to delete the meeting because then the, you'll have referential integrity issues. You're other related content will break. Basically, the display would not work properly. So you basically you want to constrain that. So once it's got related content, just protect. 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 I don't know how you pronounce that meme. Where am I going? On delete equals models protect. And then what else do we have? There's something else. Limit choices to. So if you want to provide a query, that's cool. Parent link to field. Uh, related name, here we go. So this is from a meeting. Grab the related memorial minutes. You. If this wants it as a string, let's see. Let's see where we'll use foreign key in this project. Oh boy, lots of them. But excluding the migrations. So here I'm just using the model name because it's in the same file. 
here I'm using a string. What does the docs say? Here they're using the model directly. I think Django will resolve it if I use a string. Let me. There's a problem here, as I switched singular plural. All right, I think we're good to go now. Be consistent with the way you name things, and Django um, apps should be the plural of the entity they're modeling or the plural of the concept. Sometimes your apps uh, will have multiple entities they're in, in which case it makes sense to be singular, like. Oh, for example, store, because the store has products and such like that. But in this case, contacts really is, should have been plural. Uh, let me just change check the fields. We got a more minutes. Rich text field. No more meeting. I think we're good to go. And try with the string approach. If not, I and if that's the case, then this is now an unused import. I'll save that. Let's see if this works. Hmm. Um, now I just realized. I need to, I guess, define memorial minutes under the memorials index page. Let's just try that. Sub pages. Oh man, what is it? Sub, 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 sub. Oh, man, come on. Went way off the beaten path there or something. Sub page. Models, Moodle, subpage models, subpage types. Onward. Equals an array or a list of, this is just memorial, T, my T pot is beckoning me. And we're almost two hours in. Well, one hour, 40 minutes in. We're still at the modeling part. I'll get through the view, and I do have a reference code. The big thing was the decision about how, how to proceed, if I should use a page model or whatnot. Using the page model, I think, is going to um, be uh, the right way to go, because I have code ready for writing this view, looking for URL parameters, adding pagination. I think that should work with the approach we're taking. Yeah, let's give it a try. Comma, save. So now I can actually add some memorial, but it hasn't been referenced. It hasn't been defined. I mean, I'm using it because of the ways are organized. So. Let's do that. It doesn't hoist things like JavaScript. Cool, cool. I think we should be working now. Uh, leave this alone. So now if we go to pages, memorials, where do we add memorials? Did some top level thing. Now 
I got a trial page and a new memorial. Oof. Excuse me. Content panels. Goals. Page. Content panels plus an, a list and then, no, not a dictionary, a list of field panels for each of the fields that we want to show. And we don't want to show the title field, which it does by default. Mm. I think we, let me just see if this works. If I define this, I think since I hadn't defined anything, it just uses the default, but mm, strange. So let's see, how many fields are one? Six more fields. And here's some copy pasty because avoid typos. Come on. Oh, jeez. And let's see how this foreign key works out. No, it's singular. Refresh. Still has the, still has the dang title. All right, I'll figure that out. Let me double check how this memorial minute meeting can be added. This is going to give us a list of all the meetings. That's not super. Elegant. What I'd rather have is a, uh, a way of picking it. This is one where, place where the uh, Django admin shines because you hit the plus symbol, it pops up a modal dialog where you pick that. Navigate through there. I think there's a, I think I have a plugin here installed. Page chooser panel, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think this will work. Maybe the core page chooser panel will do the job. Let's close out some of the reference that we're using. Nah, we're done using, I mean. Page chooser panel. Yeah, there we go. Now it should uh, should navigate us to meetings, but it doesn't. Okay, that's a little bit of an improvement. Uh, I do need to scaffold some content in order to test this out. So, before I can add one, but real quick while we're here, just check this out. Look, it already gives us a rich text widget for just selecting a date. I didn't have to do any of that. This is just Wagtail core functionality. Uh, the Boolean field displays a checkbox naturally. Rich text field, rich text editor, page chooser gives us the modal dialog. This is all Wagtail core. No plugins necessary, no coding required. Everything just works out of the box. Um, there's some little bits of friction, I would call it, just not that bad of stuff that once you've worked around it, it's not a big deal, like removing this title field, auto generating with a slug. Um, but that's been very rare that I've encountered things that have been sort of annoying. So what was I doing? First thing, hmm, first thing I should do is scaffold the content, thanks. Brain for remembering. In order to do that, I've got to go to pages, community, and actually just view the community page here because I need to add a meeting index. All these memorials are related, related to meetings. And this meetings is again, just like a folder, like a manila folder to hold some meetings. So if I had a child page, then I'm adding a meeting type. Let's say Grass Valley. Well, let's just see where Phoebe's from. Palo Alto, okay. This is where Mary Klein, the editor of Western Friend Magazine is located. It's a monthly meeting, which meets every week. It's kind of an interesting thing. And we'll actually be adding a custom uh, menu item here. I could actually do that now. Let me think here. Yeah, might as well. Wagtail hooks. I'll just look at the 
docs. Seven. Hmm. Now they're defining it right. advanced. Weird. I was just looking, I have, I've done this in our code base, so. Seems like there is this, like a tutorial, more tutorial oriented one. Let me just see. So here I've done, for example, facets. That's a good one. No, it's a nested one. What's one that's just top level? Subscriptions. You know, you just create a menu item and you tell it to display some content from a model, and it does it for you. This should be sufficient. Yeah. So, memorials. so we'll need a wagtail hooks. Really, I should rename these, but the convention that I read in the tutorials, I call it wagtail, underscore hooks, pi. And then we will grab the subscription. Okay. Wagtail hooks, file, and just grab the whole thing. Whoops. Okay. Copy that, close it, and just paste it in. All right, starting from the top. Model admin and model admin register. So model admin is saying we've defined a model. Now we want to expose this to the wagtail admin UI in some different some way when you got a lot of configuration options. Model admin register is actually the decorator or the method you use at the bottom. Uh, I could switch to the decorator approach. It's a little bit nicer, but in any case, to do the actual re registration once you've defined the model admin instance. So now we're going to be under, instead of subscription, we are going to be managing the memorial, yeah. So you gotta import to memorials, models, and really I should uh, collapse all this stuff and subscription, should be subscriptions. Font awesome, something. Not newspaper. No, plus I should be able to distinguish it here. Font awesome. Hmm. Something tasteful. Not something too overtly, like a lot of symbolism, just something tasteful that conveys the meaning, but that's not laden with like other meanings. It's basically, it's basically an obituary, I suppose, but not quite, it's a memorial minute.
could be church, but then they, again, this is like, well, Christian symbolism, I'll be honest. Now, the Quakers are um, predominantly Christian faith, but in the Western United States and the uh, branch of Quakers and the Western Friend is largely emerging from, uh, there's atheists, agnostic people, Buddhists, uh, a lot of Christians, but, so I don't want to be too specific. Circle notch, that's kind of interesting. The circle is broken. That's kind of cool, actually. Hmm. Very curious. Hello, Hidish. Hello, Hidish. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Okay, let's try this one out. Uh, see if this works. I think I'm using Fun Awesome 5 menu order. These can be a little bit lower in the menu. I don't think they're used quite as often. Let's see how far down that is. Not in the settings menu. Um, I can exclude them from the Explorer because in the I haven't introduced this feature during this live stream, but the Explorer is this ver for very first link pages. It's the hierarchical navigator that lets you drill through the different content here, memorials. And I believe it also might be this page when I've clicked a link in the Explorer, but I'm not exactly certain how that works. So excluding it from the Explorer, maybe I, maybe I don't have to do it. Okay, so now here's where we need to list the fields, the correct fields for this model, as well as the search fields. So give a name and family name, essentially. And full name is a method. So this is where I, I think it could be useful to, do, to have that full name method. So let's go ahead and define that. Also the string representation can return that, but uh, come on, where's my cursor? No, dude, seriously. Uh, so full name, and let's just say memorial meeting. Now what this will do, this is a foreign key relationship, so we'll actually go over into, into the related table and get the string representation of the, whatever the entity is we're referencing here. Mm, and the list filter, I don't know if Black did this formatting for me, it's kind of weird. We um, probably don't need a, a list filter here. Um, what the list filter is, if you take a look over here, it's this stuff on the right hand side. You have these point and click filters, which is getting a little scrunched on my narrow view, but in any case, that's what those are. You tell it what field. So here's the paid filter, whether or not it's paid, and you click it and it shows you only the ones, and then you know, you've got these other ones you can combine the filters. Or, it's pretty cool. It's like the Django admin, but for regular users. So it's like Take that off. Inspect view enabled. Um, now that's when you hover over and you have this little button here. I don't think we'll need that. And I think it's false by default. Inspect view fields. So since we don't have that, I'm just going to delete it all. Implicit is better than explicit. No, it's explicit is better than implicit. But in any case. Not very useful doc string, right? All right. Memorials. So then I just need to put that in the model admin register. And I think just refreshing the page should work now. Ooh. Do you see it? I might need to. I added a new file, so I have to restart the server. It doesn't pick up new files right off the bat. Only looks for changes to existing files. And M E M O R I A L S. Singular. Singular. The model, okay, so the app name is plural because it's multiple of some instance, or it can be singular if it's like 
a concept that has sub concepts like a store has products and orders uh, in the case of models though those are singular because each row represents one instance of a class here we go and darn it didn't have that but in any case we have uh, now we've got an, a menu item here it's a little bit low maybe I'll just change it to 390 because I think it's I don't know it's not so much these are uh, ranked by some sort of importance it's that maybe the things towards the top are the what are used most frequently so let's see what 390 looks like huh, it's still pretty low down there 290 save well well I don't know it's funny that 390 maybe I didn't save it I dropped it so far down dang Two ninety-nine or two ninety-five. I don't know how I'm doing this. Yeah, that's a little bit. I don't know. Well, dang it! I'll ask <laughs> Mary what she thinks on the ordering of things. Let's get this icon working. I guess this is font awesome four. Is what I'm thinking. That was such a good icon. I can look at our project dependencies and see what we're running. Wagtail, font awesome. February 9th, 2019, probably using font awesome four. Their docs are not rendering properly. Find out some four seven icons. All right. Let's see if it has a similar one. That was such a cool one, I think. But circle. Circle O notch. Okay, it's still there. And this is not a bad one either. User circle O. Will the circle be unbroken? That's, I think, a pretty good analogy. I don't know. All right, all right, all right. I'll ask Mary what she thinks. We can switch the icons. So. Now, in order to submit one of these, uh, here's another little awkward part of uh, the Wagtail UX. When you choose a parent page, it like shows you this whole page hierarchy, the whole everything, which could be quite complicated. There's a lot of content in the system. It'll show you all of them. Now, one way to limit this, I think this is good. I think we're going to leave this here. I'll come back. To, I'll leave it open. I'm going to have too many tabs open, and I haven't defined that full name method, so that's going to break. Uh, let me just do that real quick. Good grief, I'm gonna get so sidetracked on everything. Uh, full name method, and then I need to dis, uh, define the parent page types, uh, which will just let me select the only parent page or it'll infer it. So let's start with the model method.
So F strings, I think, are like this. Uh, and we would probably would want to. Bizvidin. Thanks for the follow. Bizdividin. <laughs> All right, let's look at that full name model. And parent page type. Mm, I have to look this one up. On the page model. I think it's just parent page type. Sub page type, parent page type makes sense, right? The default is not the two seven. Parent page types equals. And this should only ever be added under. The, what do I? So turned out to be not necessary. This is a string, so we're not gonna have a referential issue here, right? Because it's not quite really literally referring to the code. It's something that Wagtail inspects at runtime. Okay, so now we're back here in the Add Memorial page. I'm just gonna refresh. Actually, I'll just go back, and now I'll click the link. Now we see the difference. Once, there's a couple things at play here, but once I've told Wagtail that a memorial can only go under a memorial index page, um, then Wagtail will constrain this search to that, show me only memorial index pages. Since there can only ever be one memorial index page, then the question is basically answered and it's already inferred that for me. Now we just fill it in. Okay, how do we just, uh, I'm gonna need to um, hide this title field. We're getting really close to being able to submit the form. Hide the title field and call the JavaScript from a common location, meaning I'll have to also update the place where it's used in the contact model, no problem. Which is why we almost should be using, reusing the contact model for this. I'll, I'll ask Mary if she wouldn't mind having the shared model there. I think it would be, in this case, a good design. Okay, so I might have to refactor this. So, in the contact model, I did manage to hide the page model. Let me look this up on GitHub, though. Pretty lengthy tutorial. And there's a feature request that's going back to 2014. We do this to exclude the title field from the edit page form. Uh, so what I'm doing wrong then is basically I'm using page panels plus, except I do want the page panels to show up. In other words, if we look at my code here, we do page content panels plus these fields. And by default, the page content panels, I might be able to inspect that, is empty. Hmm. Okay, well, somehow it includes the title field, as well as the SEO and stuff like that. If I don't do that, let's look at the page now. Some stuff just so I can done that. Done this. And I'll leave this. Any progress on this?
think this will happen. Yeah, something's got to come out of that. So, so here it is. I have these promote and settings pages here. Promote has the slug and page title for the top of the browser window. Uh, whether or not it should be shown in menus, whether or not uh, search metadata, and some expiration date. So what we're going to lose is these two tabs which may not be so bad on these memorial minutes, although the search description and search metadata could be useful for SEO purposes. And this is a public uh, service that Western Friend is providing by sharing this information. Um, so we do want it to be search indexable. But in any case, let's just take this off. Well, there's fine. Save, and now just refreshing this page, adding memorials. Oh, hey, they stayed around. Okay, never mind about those two fields. That's interesting. I didn't realize that would happen. But we did lose the uh, page title, which is what we were after. Pretty cool. All right, so now uh, the other step is to auto generate this slug. Now, this is done in the client side for whatever reason when submitting the form. If it were done on the server side, I wouldn't even need this JavaScript but we do have this already existing from a tutorial and it's pretty uh, clear. It's just gonna instantiate a variable. I think it has me undefined so we can check the truthiness later on. I don't know why I did this, but make it explicit, I don't know. And then it's gonna grab the uh, values from this form, which let me just inspect those. They should also be given name. So using the same, uh, field names in the model definition means that the uh, field IDs are also the same. That's pretty cool. It doesn't append any random strings, which would be kind of something uh, Drupal might do. So we've got those two fields available and we check them both and then we slug by basically creating kind of a naive slug. We're not inspecting whether this is a duplicate or anything like that. And it just sets the value of this slug field because this the form will not submit unless this field has something in it, which is really unfortunate. So every time you change those fields, it's going to automatically slugify it. And there could be a collision in slugs, but we will just have to deal with the side effects of that. So that said, I will just rename or move. Let's see, reorganize this a little bit. I should just move the file actually, I believe to the, to the project. Um, let's see. Here. So that I don't know what I was even doing there. And that said, now that this is empty, I'll delete that whole folder because there's nothing else there. And now I think in Wagtail Hooks is where I registered that JavaScript. Hooks register, and now we're just in JS. That's all. So when the editor renders, it's going to insert some JavaScript there. And I'll take this same hook. I think this is just going to do it on every every time you render the editor, to be honest. 
me double check that. Should already be here, in fact. Contact person slug. So yeah, it's the same. Which is a little bit mysterious. Which is yet another reason I think we should be using a foreign key reference to this contact person. Hmm. And all that would mean is just adding two new fields. Hmm. Yeah, this is a little bit kludgy. Uh, I'm not gonna really know where that came from. Unless I put it in so hooks, where's that? Wagtail core hooks. Let's see if it works if I just put a wagtail under the WWF website. Oh, because it's JavaScript file. It needs to be a Python file. Back to hooks.py, save, there we go. Django before Wagtail. There we go. So basically, Django is going to make us some formatted HTML. It's going to append this script tag and get the base, the static URL from the site settings, in appending this file to the end of it every time the edit form is rendered. But that's okay. I guess it'll cache it across usages, and it's a really small file, so it's low cost to pay. And at least this. Um, Hooks code is a little closer to this JavaScript. I wonder if there's a better name for the JavaScript contact person. I'll at least annotate, write a comment. This is JavaScript, right? So I need to actually use JavaScript style comments. What do we use? Multi-line slash dot slash. So now that's said and done, I can refresh. I think we can add, add one now. Uh, what did we put here? November 17, 1918. So, oops, wrong way. Let's see if this lets me go back. Oh, dang it. Huh. That's silly. Hmm. 
I think if I set the date field minimum value to the let the widget wig wizzy wig widget thing, uh, let the user select one. Hmm. Why is it set? 1950 is the minimum. Like nothing can happen before 1950. That's a little bit naive of a limitation. I don't test it so November eighteenth. We don't want the end user to be really editing this date because it's error prone. And not nineteen fifty, nineteen eighteen. November seventeenth, nineteen eighteen. I just want to make sure I display all the fields properly. And this is Palo Alto friends. So we didn't get that correctly. And publishing should work. The slug's not there. The JavaScript's not working. Let me just leave the page. Add one, F12. All right, so this wagtail hooks this location. WF website is not a wag, uh, not a Django app. So I'm thinking wagtail. I can't register a hook from this from this folder for whatever reason. Hmm. Which is not a big deal. Just that things are gonna be spread out a little bit now. Let's see if at least this works. There it is, contact person. All right, now this double work. So this is I'll just do a paragraph of the text. So this is one of the more awkward parts of Wagtail because that page model requires the title field and generates the slugs in the client, a little bit of a combination of the two, I think. And then now we're seeing this date awkwardness also. 
perfect. So there's some attribute I can pass there just to tell it we're using a date that could go back to the 19th century potentially. I think. Well, I'm going to check the Wagtail source code. Let's open a Stack Overflow. Let's, let's do a little test here, see if and how fast I get a response for this Wagtail question. Inserting dates before year 1950 in Oracle, huh? That would be weird for the database to limit that. I suppose if you're using, for example, uh, ISO string, or what do they call it? Not ISO, but uh, epoch time. Well, then you have a different problem, but uh, that's not what we're doing here. Well, I hope. Custom I hope. Whatever. Above 19, it's not literally accurate. It's, language is a fuzzy thing. It's a fuzzy, fuzzy. 
Hmm. Wonder if I should record an animated GIF. Oh, I think I just closed the answer. <laughs> gift capture thing I used to use. Huh. It's up the top of the list. I think it's been usually buried. Giffy. So if I hit the print screen, I can't do an animated gift there. Sorry. Let's be a little bit more positive here. 1913. This is one century. So print screen after three. Without the mouse. Oh, I didn't quite get it. I need to give myself just slightly more time. After five seconds. without expecting the user to manually edit the date string. some sort of hard-coded thing. When we hard-code things, you know, it's a little bit naive. We can't think of all the edge cases. I understand they have to set some limit. Otherwise, I think it would just, yeah. It's not a trivial thing, is it? But there should be a way to override it. All right, in the meantime, let's have a small race. What? There it goes. All right, <clears throat> let's check the source. I might be able to discover the answer by browsing the source. First thing I'm looking for, scripts. This seems to be like CI related stuff, so no. I'm looking for the it's the JavaScript section, the JavaScript half a wagtail. Client source comp 
components. Not draft hell, no, no. If I right click on it, actually, I could probably get a hint from the code. So, yeah, I didn't find anything in the date field docs. Nothing here. In the field. This is that Tim on web. This was a good suggestion. I will remember Tim on, Tim on web, how to hide and out of, oh, no, no, this is a different one, sorry. Title field is a page in Wagtail. I think I sort of got the code from this. I don't remember, I should have given attribution there. All right, inspect this, find out. Field date field. Admin date input, that might be the key. Admin date input. Man, I'm almost gonna need some more tea. Nope, that was not the key. Ah, uh, but one thing I can do is then also check the JavaScript. Hmm, static. jQuery date time picker. Hey, we might be onto it or something. I thought we were like more or less using React here. Yeah, your start. There it is. All right. Found it. Is this something deprecated? Maybe they didn't search to react, but uh yeah. checking out ye back in the day. <laughs> Never happened to that. Whoops, no, why I I Huh, still kicking. That's pretty cool. Two point oh, let's see what the two point oh release was like. Oh, been a lot of them actually. Yeah, I think Yi was kind of one of those uh, PHP batteries included frameworks. All right, let's get back on track. So is this basically the uh, jQuery? Let me see if I'm even looking at the right widget. I might not be, or they might have done some custom styling. Good grief. jQuery, daytime picker, JS. Let's see what that looks like. Yep, that's the right one. Ooh. Oh boy. Website's down. Just gonna check, see if I got an answer. I did one index. Oh. <laughs> All right, 
get contacts and add your star pocket. But look at this. Look how fast that came in. That answer. Five minutes. Under five minutes. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I was afraid I'd have to override it. I didn't actually think I'd have to override it, to be honest. But yeah, I'm just, I'm just afraid of that. This is sort of helpful. I could use a different daytime widget if I'm just doing that anyway. Hmm. Well, little gotchas along the way, but all right, all right. This is not very well updated in the official websites, D-E-D. -E -D. So let's see. There's this one um, JavaScript widget I was using. Oops, excuse me. What was that called? Well, let's just search for it. Pick a day. Yes. I will not pick my nose. Hmm. Hmm. Pick a day demo. Let's see it. Let's see what you got. Yeah. Same thing. You need to. Well, not bad. Not bad. But there's this one that's like cross platform, really nice looking. Yeah, and it's going to have a minimum date, but this dang thing. You just scroll, 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 scroll. Oh, but look at that, look at that. It's going back in time. 19th century style. Maybe it's just lazy loading these dates in somehow. It's going to let me go forever. Hmm, that's not too bad. Picker JS. What if I don't like it flying off the bottom of the screen? <laughs> I don't like the scrollingness of it though, man. Can you just do this and hold it? We have to click each time. There we go. Maybe if it had inertia. Whoa, wait a minute. Does it have inertia? No inertia. All right, all right, we'll keep trying.
there was one that had minimal dependencies and it was like really clean looking. I thought it was pick a day. This is good. So how many clicks did I take to get there? All right, well, so one click, two clicks to get to the date range. It's not obvious, it was an accident, but I did find it. Mary might be able to find that. Uh, this is 36K. I don't necessarily want to replace it system-wide. I don't want to collide either. Man, now we're getting to the inner workings of Wagtail Admin. So one click, two clicks, but then you have a few clicks to get back in time. 1917, that was when Finland was born. November 17th, 1918 hours. So yeah, I don't like this inertialist scroller. And this used to be looking nicer. I thought there was like a flyover. Maybe I'm misremembering. Well, we're three hours in and haven't just got to this one feature and still haven't done the user interface for searching. Man. What I'll do is I'll check the Jerry Life project. I don't even know how to spell my own project. So, package JSON. We are using dependencies. Flat picker. This one's like minimal dependencies, pretty flat and UX. Lean philosophy we likes. Examples. Select a date and I select this and I can actually just like 1917. Boom. Let's go for that. All right. Now we're two hours, 43 minutes, 44 minutes into this stream. I'm gonna need just a small break. Uh, crack my back, my shoulder muscles, stretch them, make some more tea. And I think we're gonna go with this flat picker. Although, you know, this air picker is okay too. I've never even heard of it though. I don't know much about it. I'm more familiar with flat picker. And there's no, there's fewer clicks here. It's, it's more intuitive. Like if I wanna change the year, I can literally just click it here or maybe scroll. No, scroll doesn't work, but yeah, you can like, in the year 2000, you change it and it should. Update that. So yeah, I will make some tea and be right back. And when we continue, we will figure out how to uh, load this date picker over the field. Close my tab so I can get right back on it. In the Wagtail UI. Here. I think it's just gonna be some jQuery magic. I don't want to collide with the existing date picker, so I'll have, to, I'll have to be a little bit careful there. All right, cool. Well, thanks for hanging out in the Twitch stream, and I'll be back in just a few minutes. I'll make a little bit of tea.
Okay. I got an idea. Water's boiling. I'll have to go get that in just a moment. What I'm going to do is right here on the screen, even right here. I can probably define a custom panel, and there may even be one existing uh, that I can use as a template, or that could be uh, using flat flicker already. I don't know. I'll take a look at it. But without having to hook into too much of the wagtail functionality, I think if I define my own panel, it can just include whatever HTML and CSS. Maybe it'll inherit it from the field panel. Hmm. I don't know. Let's take a look at that. Then I can just create a, for example, a flat picker panel. So let's check a look. Panel. I've done something similar. Otherwise, I'll just include the JavaScript in the project and uh, hook into there when the page renders or something when the form renders. But I don't, I don't see there's a way of, of doing this. So we're going to go with Flat Picker. And let's see if I can answer here. And I'll process this just a little bit and go get the tea ready. One moment. Thanks again for hanging out. Okay, the team needs about five more minutes. So, now the response I've gotten, I noticed both of these, this conversation has transpired very quick. Both of these responses have come within minutes. I posted the original question 21 minutes ago and I've already gotten within five minutes the initial response from AKX. Left shark at the Valo High. Okay. Deep learning management platform. Very cool, very nice, thank you. And some gentle guidance, general guidance, not specific recipe oriented stuff, which my beginner brain kind of needs. 
All right. Essentially, though, the idea here is I have to create a new widget or something along those lines and render this flat picker JavaScript on that widget and then potentially, potentially, I can publish this to GitHub under Awesome Wagtail, which I was also going to check Awesome Wagtail to see if somebody's already done this. Date widgets. Then I would have like a more clear example even to follow. Lee uh, Geo widget, that's cool. Well, that's Google Maps, so that's not so cool. Leaflet, markdown, autocomplete instance, selector. Huh. That might be nice. Man, but in any case, uh, there's some good stuff here. If I look closer at one of these, just a simple one, I don't know what would be most simple. How they're organizing the code. So they've done a custom panel. And they essentially create an app. Block. It's a lot of stuff. Widget. Some script. Where's that import from? It's gonna be a little bit more complicated than I thought. Man. Ooh, I just want a simple recipe to follow. So you got a field and you render something under the field. So you've got metadata, configuration, app config. So it's basically a Django app. Okay. I need to find a custom block. Ah, no, but we're not doing block. We are doing a field panel. There we go. And that's essentially what this res uh, recommendation is. I'm not sure there's a clear recipe in the uh, Django docs, or Wagtail docs, so I'm gonna skip through that. Our time's got a couple more minutes on the T. So they're saying, if you can override the widget class in the model, that would work. in the model and by class there's a couple of things are kind of uh, compounding my brain a little bit uh, there's the class like the class on an HTML element or the widget class more specifically a Python class how do I override the widget class in the model uh, There's a lot of context out here. Missing out of here.
think if I just create a custom panel extending from field panel most of this I believe would be unnecessary most of these methods. So this is getting it somewhere. It's just a Django custom form widget. Okay, cool. We're in a little bit broader territory now. It's not so Wagtail specific. I believe the T is ready. I'll be right back. Very cool. So yeah, I think Wagtail generally extends on Django functionality. Uh, it does its own thing a little bit, but it's not reinventing too many the wheel, so to speak. So I think I can just define a custom form input element in Django. This should be pretty well documented. Django's got really great documentation. Wagtail has great documentation or really good documentation. I don't know. It's good though. Check. 
widget is Django's representation, representation of an HTML input element. The widget handles the rendering of HTML and the extraction of data from Git post dictionary. <clears throat> so, a little bit lower level than I was hoping for. Also, maybe there's a Django flat picker. July 15th, all right. Huh, it's already there. <laughs> Dude, that's too cool. Ecosystem matters. It's just having an ecosystem that's not going to evaporate and you know, building on that, keep building it up. Please do that. Whatever you're working in, whatever your programming language. And you know, I really hope that Django and Python ecosystems continue to evolve. Pip install. So we're not using pip. Let's try it out. Let's try it out. Poetry add, but you know, even here I'm using poetry instead of pip, or you know, so it's not perfect. There's always a little bit of churn and little new things to learn. A few new things to learn, but just as long as you don't throw the whole thing away every other day. Installed app says flat picker, and I'm over exaggerating on the. JavaScript fatigue thing, but it is, it is real. It is definitely real. Settings, base settings, apps. Now when we do plugins, I will put them in alphabetical at the bottom of the list. Correct syntax. And we just want a date picker input, so I will import here. And then I'll hop back over to the code. And I put the import at top. I'm trying to remember what order I should do these. Something like that. Widget equals date picker input. Yeah. Right. And I should uh, copy that and paste that. The comma. Just trying to see if there's any tabs I can close here. Reload. It just worked. <laughs> Very cool. Oh man. I don't even know how to summarize that. It's just the ecosystem. All right, that saved some good time.
Now our date picker widgets are a little bit inconsistent. Where else are we using a date picker widget though? Ah, sorry for the chug of lugging, but <clears throat> sometimes you gotta do that. Get a fresh, 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 fresh. Make sure the lid's on. I gotta shake this up a little bit. I haven't been committing for a while, so my commit is gonna be a tangled mess. I suppose I'll look for date field instances in this project. Not in migrations. Publication date equals date field. And then an event has a date field, I believe. I'm going to power through this feature and get the uh, pagination and the search and everything. I'm going to try to do it tonight. I just got a whole nother pot of tea. We're good to go. in a second because I'm going to display some metadata or the other fields there just haven't gotten to that events we need this for the pagination yes library we want this for uh, faceted searching yep we're going to do that And then I'm, I'm going to have to commit these changes very soon. It's just a date field, right? Yeah. So we're going to have a consistent widget. We've had a pretty good experience with that flat picker JS, by the way. So the Django flat picker project is updated on July 15th. When does the flat picker, 12 days ago. So actually might be worth doing a, a bump to see if they'll 4.6.3. They didn't just hard code the no. Hmm. How did they get in that? check the dependency. I'm assuming it's not updated because this package hasn't been published in a while, but maybe I'm wrong. I wonder if there's a way to tell from the code here of 12. Static. Four. 
4.5.2. So yeah. I can open a PR for that. So I just want to stay on track. Publication date. So where are we defining content panels? Date field, date, models, date of birth, start date. I want it to be consistent across the board. So every time we see a, a date picker widget, it's flat picker. Ah, I gotta import it, of course. Right, because this is considered as an app, I suppose. But my linter's not picking it up properly. Seems like. Publication date. So this is going to throw. And this is an app. I don't know. My imports are getting messy there. I think we should be out of the weeds with those errors. Do these commits. Install flat picker. Did I do capitalize it? Or is that because it's the first letter of the sentence? lot of things here. So we'll say use flat picker. Still at work in the memorials. What's this? Is the additional fields as well as registering the memorial model? And then we'll add more uh, configuration necessary but we might not need it full name in a memorial meeting might be sufficient and also the filter widget might be good for a memorial meeting but we have a lot of meetings so we'll have to see how that how that plays out All right, 
cup of tea. All right, three hours we're in strong. Well, probably be closer to four hours when this session's done. But this is a big feature in terms of importance, and it's turning out to be a little bit uh, more involved than I was expecting. Very cool. That way other people who might have the same issue have the reference. Continue working on this model. I should commit it at some point. In fact, I think this is a good uh, juncture. We've got all the right fields in there. A foreign key is working. Let me double check. Let me just double check that everything works. I actually haven't successfully submitted this form, to be honest. Close this tab out. I'm not using it. And I'm not using that anymore. All right, so let's go ahead and submit this memorial. It'll be the first one. And uh, yes, the JavaScript is working now. Family name. I think this is family. Uh, okay, so let's double check it. November 17th, 1918. 17, 1918. Oh. How does this work? So I'm going to change it. November 17th just works. All right. Uh, I was wondering if the days should shift, right? I didn't notice that. Uh, April 20th, 2018. So let's watch these days again. April 20th, 2018. So let's go to April. Uh, ooh, can't do that. Ah, Trade-offs. April what? Sorry. <laughs> 20th. That's what I was thinking. 2018. All right, so April 20th is on a Saturday. Yeah, it does shift. It's just very, very quick and subtle. It'd be nice if you could select a month, but okay. Dates are approximate, not in this case. Memorial Minute, let's just grab the first paragraph. Just so we have something to render to the template, because that we haven't even gotten the template written either. Uh, we do, but not all the other fields. That is. Okay, this is Palo Alto Friends Meeting. It is a little bit of a long session, but we're turning along. Okay, tile field cannot be blank. Well, there we go. Ah, yes. Okay, this is good. This is a good sign. I didn't get a validation, a form validation issue uh, error. I need to update the, I think it's the clean data or the save mo method on the model. So no problem. Go back to the contact model if it's not already open. Yeah, close the working tree diffing thing, subscription magazine library. Contact person slug, we're done here. This is. It's working. Ragdoll hooks. Um, I think we're done here. So looks like I closed the tab out for contact uh, model, which is cool. And I just need a model method for the person model, because the person's where we've encountered this dealy where we don't have a title. Uh, in the form, in the editing form, but we need to save a title internally for Wagtail to work. So here we just override the uh, name method. And actually this whole 
This is good. Adding the surge indexing can't hurt. Maybe even doing it. Um, database table. I should I should consider that for consistency. Otherwise, it just uses it. Um, it prefixes it with the app name. All right, let's come, let's come back down here. Right, needs args and quargs. <sighs> now we got white space errors. Ah, oh, crap. Oh, it fixed them. some keyboard combination. Huh. Well, it's picking up on using ports. Very cool. So we should be able to submit it now. December. It's November seven, November eighteenth. Oh, you can't see. Looks like you could change it. So basically, this save method, this hook, save hook or method here will run and give you an opportunity to modify the data prior to being saved to the database. We just need to populate the title field since we're not filling it in the form. It's not being submitted with the form. It was a required field. There we go. We got it. Now I'm going to click this link. We're going to see some yellow. No, no. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Memorials.memorial.html. Memorials.memorial. All right. So now we want to uh, extend. Base HTML. We want to override the content block. Oh, cruising along now. And we want to just in block content for clarity as a good habit. You don't have to include the con uh, block name there. The content block name is optional, but it just helps you have reference to what's closing, especially if you're overriding several blocks or if your blocks are really long. 
the content in the blocks. So now we will, uh, I think we want a header one. And basically the page title. Let's just try that. Now the title, if you recall, it's derived from the full name, which could, well, might as well be a method of the model, but uh, isn't it already? Right there, actually. So why don't I just do self full name? That's a little bit, All right? Uh, yeah. Oh, man. This could be... I might have to strip white space from those. strip white space from these edges because there won't be any but inside here there could be and then we're not using that anymore all right just you reusing content reusing the code that is so things don't get out of sync there we go very nice now let's go ahead and display the other fields in the template and just in no particular well let's see how do we display them over here each of their own panels. Well, I don't know if we want to do that. I suppose that's not bad. Yeah, let's go for it. Let's see. Now with Emmett, how do you do three of something? I think you can do that. E-M-M-E-T. -E Whatever. So here we're going to have div um, just get the markup. I don't remember this off the top of my head. We're using Bootstrap 5 card and we want it to be call medium four Oh, you don't have to do that anymore, yeah. Just you tell it it's a column on medium devices. This can probably be a column on small devices. So we're going to have a title. Like, a lot, of, a lot of boilerplate here, but okay. This should really be an H2. And that'll be page, page, uh,
Oh, it'll be date of birth and then the, the value will be. You can use the label of that somehow. Expanded too far. Actually, I'm just going to hide the whole thing. <clears throat> just, that should be sufficient. Card. Page. All right, let's just see if this worked. All right, cleaned up my code a little bit for me. It looks clean. We'll have three of those, or as many, it'll automatically do the, the arithmetic for us. And this is meeting, I guess. Building. Memorial meeting. Yeah, there we go. Now, there's no margin. Let me check out the layout. If there's gutter, see there seems to be got a container. And then you've got these columns of but one another. But is there inside of the container there's some sort of margin or should I just add that? Padding. Padding, I mean. No, no, margin. Because the content inside there seems to have some sort of padding. So what I'm going to do is this. Put the card inside there. Going to getting dividus. Dividus. Okay. Let's see if this makes a difference. Just with one of ah, I'm trying to scroll down here. There we go. Well, even that middle one, uh, it works, but I'm going to do it. Let's see, actually. No, let's do them all. So. Come on. Mm -hmm. 
All right, this is nice to have these little clean ways of doing thing things. Also, this is redundant, but that needs to go there. That way everybody's the same height. Okay, now we need another rope. And the whole thing is just a card. Uh, but this is H, H2, uh, I think H2 should be fine. I think it's semantics, it's proper semantics, H2. And what is it, content? Text. Oh, it's right about there. And this would be now the rich text field for the page memorial minute. And for that, I need to from wag uh, load. Container with a div class row. Uh, I need a div class call. Just so it has the same padding. First off, but then why is it overlapping? Do I need to have some margin bottom? I think the rows just are like right against one another. But let's see if this this just works. Yeah, at least we get the width and then well, margins off three decent, roughly the same. Well, I think margin top what? Max at five. Maybe that's too much. Four. All right, cool. And I'll get feedback from Mary. This is just a proof of concept to get the things working. And then if the dates are approximate, I'll put a little indicator there. I think I'll do that. So then it's essentially <clears throat> How do you do if? <laughs> I'm forgetting the Django templating language.
updates are approximate. See if it'll treat it as a Boolean. All right, so something else going on. That's good. But to what? Something in the model, something in the save method. You have to actually invoke the, the method. That's the problem. Publish. There we are, view. Now, back to the template. Save that. Refresh. There we go. So if they're approximate, we want to display. Somewhere, there's one November 1st. Might be that we don't know the date of birth or they were born on November 1st. Boulder. Okay. January 1st, so this could be one. Ah, yeah, here we go. Dates of birth and or death are approximate. Where does the display here? Oh, right on the top. Well, I think I'll put it yeah, right below. But I will I'll use that same text. So this will be a row. Uh, and then we can just use our little if statement. And uh, information box. this for a second just just to see it in there oh put it in the wrong place no should be right between these rows what did I there we go all right so Too much attention to it, so let's do text typography. Somehow you can do like subdued text or light. Pretty good text info.
Oh, actually, so if it's a paragraph, it's going to naturally break up. Oh, but it won't always. Dang it. The margin top two would be all right. Or just, I can't do it like that, though. Hmm, because this whole thing really shouldn't display. I don't need an empty div to display. The problem being, this looks fine. color text light. No. It's too light. Secondary. All right, now if I can check these, let's just check the alignment. Might not be worth fussing over. It's a little bit tight, but not right noticeable. Three. Good, now we've got it in the UI, things are displaying correctly. We can change the layout layer. I'm gonna commit these and push. I'm gonna work on the pagination then for the memorials. Uh, what are we at, four hours? No, almost four hours. Got a little bit of tea left. Yeah, sorry. I am losing uh, my focus and getting a little fatigued. We did initial fields, save, and then search index. the full memorial template with uh, conditional logic. All right, this is gonna be a little bit more challenging part. We're gonna enter into here. Need some tea to help us down the road. And my little, my little coaster fell to the floor. Got this oatly, it's good stuff. Only barista, I guess it's called E Cafe. I don't know if they sell this, where they sell it. I think it's something Swedish. They have a lot of it here in Finland. All right, so I'm gonna leave the memorial uh, template for now. We're gonna need to 
work in the memorial index page model that's just going to nag me for a little bit and we're going to i think override the page context i'll either start with pagination first or faceted searching hmm. this is going to be a little challenging right I think we're done here. The events model has the uh, pagination, so let's go. Let's go in with that. So I'm just going to grab this whole context and bring it over here to the memorial model. Not sure how these are going to interplay when I do fascinated searching. So this is basically when all the memorials for right now. No filter is necessary. The filtering part will come in the, through the faceted search. I might break these into sub functions. I'm not sure. Should should be fine. Memorials, three per page. I do this. I always forget this. Control Shift L. Page not integer and empty page. So for memorial and memorials, we'll need to at least Okay, a couple of them. So now for the events template, what does the uh, pagination code look like there? Let's take a look. Thankfully, I've solved this problem in the past, so we can just, you know, use that code. Well, let's go ahead and grab all of it. So if events, so if memorials, all right. Memorial index page. Memorials. Oops. And this can all be Dented. So, oh, what did I hit? Part of it is I'm getting held up by my teapot. Then 
we don't need this. More of that title should be sufficient. Whoops, sorry about that. Memorials so that we have some content here. Draw that way. Not so much. So many tabs open. I don't want to be too uh, take too much time here. I'm just going to have a little bit of incorrect information, but just know that this is an experiment. It should be enough to demonstrate the memorials thing. If I go to settings, main menu, we add a link. Save that. Now we run to the front end and we refresh. Oh, dang it. I also need to go to the memorials page and edit that. I should create a hook that just when I add something to the menu, it dang sets the content to be show in menus true. I guess it's there just to prevent accidental. Menu modification, there it is, there we go. All right, so page one of one. Aha, so that is working. And I got my paginator set, you know, so to speak, relatively high. If I just say one per page, that's good. But let's, uh, this, uh, well, let's try it, refresh that. So that's working. Pagination is working. So we want these to be header level two. If you ask me. And actually, I believe, you know, we want a whole card here. So let's do this. Let me say we're decorating this. Card, card. What do I got here? Just leave that there.
No, this is H2. And then the title. And then we actually want this whole thing to be here. Why a list group? Do I need a list group here or just cards? A list group. Although, I see. Let me see what the uh, template is over here. On the memorials page here, the list group items. Okay, let's stick with that. So we're not going to use cards. Should work right. No. There's an example of this card with list group in there. Components card. Div card UL. So yeah, it's just right inside there. Kind of hard to tell. <clears throat> tell them apart. Oh, li. That's the problem here. So we got a card, and they don't have a card body in the example. Maybe that's makes a difference. And they have an unordered list with list group and list group flush. They have list group items. Just make sure I don't have 
typos here. Could be that this uh, material design library styling the list groups differently. So that we're actually, that this is actually correct. <laughs> nice. And the card title can have the, the filtration, the uh, faceted searching. Hey, what's up, level two? Sorry, I just saw your message there. You all be over waking up at 3 p.m. Whoa, how's the online subscription going for you? It's going pretty good. Actually, I uh, got the subscription part of the website um, pretty much wrapped and reviewed. Uh, we're going to do a, a full site review um, prior to launch, and that'll probably turn up a lot of changes needing needed all throughout this, this uh, all the features. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. But now I'm working on this uh, memorial minutes, the community memorials. So. This is coming along. I'm in the, um, I would call it the last leg or the home stretch. I think uh, getting pagination working and in a faceted search. Then once that's in place, I can kind of call this feature a wrap, I believe. Uh, with this fa I just realized, I was thinking, sorry, sorry that this um, pagination should be inside the card. Could be more natural there. Very cool. Is there like a card footer? Card like card body, I suppose. What have you been up to today? Other than sleeping, sleeping in. Is it three p.m. there already? Oh yeah, you're on the east coast. <clears throat> Is this gonna work? Card body. Yeah, more or less. Let's change the pagination down to one again, just so we have something to paginate. Oops, gotta to refresh too early on that one. Mm, yeah, it looks kind of okay. Why has it got so much space around it though? Because of this stuff. Margin top, margin left. I don't even know what step links is. This is probably something bootstrapish, strapified. Ah, wrong one. Save it. Bootstrap says, streaming out of my games. Others can play through the chat input. Working on my Twitch extension programming. Very cool. Uh, with the Twitch extension, you're using JavaScript, right? Or is that, uh, I can't remember. Is that Python? I'm having dribbles, memoring things. This looks okay, though. Why is, oh, I put the card body. I see what I did wrong. I put card body around the wrong stuff. What did I, I need the card body up here. Whew, I'm getting a little bit tired. Then I don't actually need that other stuff, I think. Text center should be off. All I need there. There we go, it's a little cleaner. Very nice. Okay, we got the memorial for each of these. I wonder if I can just do an H2 here then. If the LI is just not working.
because that's h1 this is h2 and a little bit of text so we'll add a little bit of context underneath of them i need a small break i'll be right back All right, ready to continue. So yeah, each of these um, memorial minutes simply displays the date they were born and died. And in lines, we would want those to be spans, it appears, with margin left. I don't know if they need to be justified or anything like that. I think just, as long as we know which dates go to which name, it should be okay. Let me just wand over that. So you ever use an H2? And I think I tried to put in, um, uh, some metadata or that might come directly from, from Drupal. I will want to put in, what are those called? Uh, some sort of semantic web tags on, on certain content like this so it's more easily indexable. All right. How's your Twitch extension coming along level two? What do you got um, planned? What's on the roadmap? So I believe we'll just wanna, for each one of these, the title and then This is just a couple of spans. Spans. I could put a margin right on that one. Oh. Five or something. Let's see how it looks. 
that didn't work how I thought. Let me take the pagination off first. Go back to the design mode. I don't know, we should have this thing. Probably 10, 10 per page or something. All right, so spans are inline elements, I thought, not block elements. So that's weird. Also, why is it butting up against the edge of the card there? Because it's not in the card body. Right, there's no such thing here. Yeah, these list group items, see what they've got. Sometimes I can get good dis, uh, design ideas from, from these types of things. Well, that might be interesting. Actually, yeah. A list group within a list group. It's like, <laughs> what is that called? List groupception. All right. There's probably a better way to do that. I could probably just use, uh, now I've lost this. Both of these spans can go, oh, you know, divs or something, rows. Div row and column for layout. Anyway, let's just see if it looks good. No. Uh, Is it because my screen is small? No. What's the deal, yo? Okay, looks like level two is has gone on their way. All right, what am I doing wrong here? Let's go to UL. What's the UL. Dagnabbit. This is really close to what I'm trying for. Uh, wow. I just want the text justified left and right because we've got a lot of width here. Maybe I can let go of that. Or this. This is what I need. And then two smalls. Essentially, that's what we're looking at, right? We've got a list. Oh, okay, I've got a card with an unordered list inside there, which is a list group. 
So it could be a div, it doesn't really matter, I suppose. In fact, why don't we just switch it back to div now? Because it's got a header in there. And a paragraph. Uh, basically it worked. Maybe they don't need to be so small. work but what I want to do is then say padding Yeah, let me check out this width argument because I really just I don't know how the flex works. It's a new thing in Bootstrap. It's probably what I'm looking for here, though. Layout flex. For the flex box, not every element display is to change to flex. Most of our components are built with flex box enabled, so you could add display flex to an element. Flex box utilities for sizing. I'm a flex box container. Inline flex box container. Justify content center. Spans first, now they're working right. That's freaking weird. Ah, crap. So I want some padding. And a little bit of a margin right there. Secondary text looks like. Then we want this whole more or less the whole card to be a link. So didn't really need the flex. So float. group item each each item should be a link here we go so instead of This is A. <sighs> yeah, so we need the H drive then. 
can put everything inside of there. Hopefully it won't be too ugly with the heading text and such. Let's just see what that looks like. Not too bad, not too bad. Ah, but. to be a row or something. Oh, no. They had an example with the works. Two block elements. An H2 element and a paragraph. For some reason, let me get all the way against that. Wait, this is just not as simple. First step of the way. It's a little bit challenging. Flush. this here for a second. List group item. List group item action. Then we should just be able to go straight to this header. And from there we should be able to go straight to the paragraph. Because I don't need this justified text. I don't need this small text. For whatever reason Hmm. Right. It's not the header that's the list group item, right? Need a div around this whole list group item. That's what I did wrong. Got it. Ah, I've already got the list group item. Check. Just one level up. There we go. There we go. That should work. I hope. Yeah, there we go. It's a little bit tighter. All right, now the other problem is why is Charles Atley, why are these not these playing like block elements?
really what we have here is an anchor tag surrounding a header and a paragraph. What if I put a margin on top, bottom, I mean? This is just jank though. I shouldn't have to do that for two block elements. That's not even working. That is weird. Oh, are you still around level two, learn? Level two, I didn't know that. Uh, ah, you're AFK. Hey, do you have a moment to help me figure out what I'm doing wrong here? This is, I'm having some layout problems. It's kind of a little bit mind boggling what I'm doing wrong. Essentially, if you can see the light shade of gray behind each of these, this is a list group embedded in a card. I don't have to do this. Maybe I can just do, uh, actually, let me just see if I can simplify the markup a little bit. I just realized I can, what I'm trying to do is create a, a list group, essentially. I don't need the card, the whole card is, uh, markup is a little superfluous, or, so to speak. But if this is just a list group item here. Oh my God, what happened? All right, let's see how this looks. All right, so that means it goes into the list group. I want a list group of all these people, these memorials, paginated list group, and for each item, oh, the damn list group's not even working. It should look like this. It should just be a list group item with a title and a paragraph. And they should be clickable because it's going to take a uh, link to a page. It says I can use div and anchor. Yeah, I want to use bootstrap because it gives me all these um, components that I don't have to think about styling, but then every so often it. Uh, Gives me some hassle. 
So maybe if I just actually just render this into the, the template. If memorials, just render that. Okay, so I do want to render it in a card, it looks like. At least that looks okay. Now, instead of wrapping it in a div and having small text, I just want header level two. two. Bootstrap, plug in and play. Yeah, that's why I'm using Django. That's why I'm using Wagtail. Uh, so I can just focus on building out the content management platform, Do, doing the unique things, not doing the things that really have been solved pretty uh, plainly. So let's just see if this will work if I do this three more times. Do you use any CSS framework or what would you recommend? What's a good one? All right, so that's actually kind of working. I just don't want the active action thing. I must have some dang error in my markup. What do you use? Uh, those seem to be working now. Hmm. Margin bottom one, maybe I did it. Let's group item, let's group item action. Probably have a tang typo. So the This may be the part where I'm getting all screwed up. JSS, CSS and HTML. Yeah, I, I appreciate that uh, approach for sure. Yeah, let's see that I just paste this in there. Something a little bit different there. Something a little different happened. Dang it, still doing it. See how Charles Atlee has the text right by the, beside their name? But yeah, I normally I mean vanilla. I'm not against using a library, especially if I'm working for somebody to speed up the process. Yeah, that makes sense. In this case, maybe the library is slowing down the process while simultaneously speeding up the process. It's kind of a tricky, tricky situation. But essentially, I want these to be the title and the paragraph on separate I mean, they're block elements. Ah, oh, dude. So I've kind of gone full circle. I'm chasing my tail here. And then there's some pagination involved. The pagination seems to be fine. Use divs, not spandin. Yeah, but the, the p tag a block element. Wow, now it's just all funkadelic. Ooh, 
wait. All right, I'm waiting. I ain't touching anything. You mean what? Uh, right. So header two and P, those are both block elements. They should just automatically go to the next one, right? You know, if this li maybe they just I'll stop messing with this list group. Maybe that's the problem. So just get a little tea that helps to soothe the nerves. Do you have any of your custom style? No, I haven't. Uh, I haven't defined any CSS. That's why I kind of turned to Bootstrap so I could just keep things really minimal. Well, uh, well, I just basically focus on features. I don't want to really make my own component library right now, but so to speak, the CSS components at least. That said, I could look in uh, the static folders. There is some CSS. Ah, I'm sorry, I take, no, 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 I didn't write any custom CSS. Put a, okay, check this out. At the end of the, the uh, this span here, let me save this and refresh. Now we see what we're going on. So this is working correctly. I want these span. I want them to display in line these date of birth and death. I do want those to behave like span elements. But the BR would go here. In between the heading and the paragraph because I don't want the paragraph to display in line. But you see I'm refreshing it and it's yeah I think the first ones are working only because the line is so long. If I change the title just for example let's say title one or something short then they're both going to do that. Now in the, the example here, maybe it's because I need this, this, this flex, D flex W equals 100. I think that's gonna actually fix it. Kind of confusing, but okay. So can I just put it on this? That fixed it. <laughs> oh gosh, that's still weird though. Block elements. Um, I don't know anything about the flex box, but block elements. I thought it would just display like blocks. They would take up the full width. I probably don't need this margin bottom anymore. Let me just see how that looks. Yeah, it's actually a little cleaner. Strange. I thought you copy and paste uh, the explain. Yeah, I don't know. Always copy and paste. But I did, I did actually, I think, on this one. Mm, who knows? It's not exactly the way they do it. Page one up one. All right, then how do we... I want to text justify. By content center. Whoa. There we go, looking good. So 
So then the last thing I need for this linking in the pagination, and we're running at five hours. I don't know if I'm going to make it. Oh, okay, cool. Level two. Uh, hey, earlier I asked you, uh, thanks for helping me take a look at this and work that out. But I asked you, what's on your roadmap for your um, your Twitch plugin? Are you, are you hacking away on that? You said you were AFK for a while. You got any features planned? I just need these links to work. So this is a wagtail page URL, I think. This looks horrible. Mary will tell me pretty plainly if it does. I got the config page down, base. Now I'm working on the back end server code and the front, front end. So once I get a better laptop, I'll be on the stream, able to stream this out. Yeah, that'll be cool. Check out your stream. What kind of laptop you're looking at? Um, by the way, I got a little bit. Um, I think you get more bang for your buck if you get a desktop. I don't know if the laptop, the portability, is a factor for you, um, or if you're thinking about doing study streaming and uh, development on these long-term projects. It might be good just to get a good home office set up. Uh, just my two cents. That's what I kind of ended up doing here. So I got like a four core i5 processor with eight gigs RAM. And I think it was only, oh gosh, I can't really remember. We bought it on our business account, but I think it was like, well, hmm, I can't remember now. Was less, it was less than a thousand. That was less than it would have been for a laptop. We weren't, it wasn't exactly like splurging, just wanted something nice to, uh, to get going. And it's been a good experience. So let me see if I can tighten this, this layout up just a little bit. Like, I don't know if I need this whole margin top three thing, but it was like, mm, maybe that's the only problem. this H100 do? Nothing really. But for my work, laptop, the work issue laptop, I got a Lenovo, those, those are pretty good. This is just going to be pretty tight if I edit this page and I uncheck the dates are approximate. I view it live. Yeah, that's why. So I need a little bit of something there. Yeah, can't really get out, get around that. Just have to have a little bit of something there. I think the three was the right way. Just really big with the dates approximate because oh dang all right well we're good to go we're good to go let's just go ahead and commit this stuff
So the next fun bit will be faceting. Oh, pretty close. Five hours in. This has been a bigger feature than I thought. Oh, there's a couple of uh, other features I'll work on in the next stream. But essentially what we did here On the media library page, we have this faceted searching, which is essentially a form that you submit. I don't have the content scaffolded here on the development site, but it looks like this library. It just got a, you have a bunch of fields here. And essentially it's all one form. It's just kind of split around the page more or less. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly how the the, the, uh, yeah, the Drupal faceted searching plugin works. I think some of this is Ajax and some of it's a, a form that gets posted. So we will simulate this. And the way I've done it on our local uh, development environment, actually I could have gone view live, go back to memorials. I don't have a quick way to demo it, but we'll put the, the facet searching fields up here. I think they'll just be more or less freeform fields. But look how the memorials are faceted here. We've got the name, which is a fuzzy search. Memorial meeting, which can be pre-populated with all the meetings. Yeah, why not? And then we have ordering. I'm going to just try the fuzzy searching for now. So actually that, the git context is what's going to send the items back to the template and we want to filter by some facets hmm. another thing I just realized is we have a computed field ah but the title I can use the title field What you have to do to level two? Are you you're impressed by the faceted searching or? Let's see. So let's just go ahead and grab all of this and uh, I'll, I'll whittle it down. Doing my little copy pastey, but this is code I've written. So copy paste in my own code is okay to do. Ah, yes, but we already have the context here. So let me think here. So we get the super context, then we're gonna get the So yeah, the, the whole um, faceted searching needs to happen before we actually search for the memorials because there'll be a filter applied to this. Yes, filter. I'm just going to put it in place. Uh, it was just like, it was a spread operator. Facets. Yeah, there we go. So up to that was good. We're not working with the templates so much. You will oh, actually, ding. I should have left that one open. All right, so we got the super. Now, one thing I'd like to pass into the pass into the search field is the meetings. Which I will need to import object all um, so I guess contact uh, 
models important meaning all right so we got that so yeah the two things I'll need to open is the memorial index page and I'm looking at the library index page to see how I populated that drop down list for author and authors. For example, this one. Now, this is a form. The faceted searching all happens inside of a form. And this form will be embedded in the sort of the, the um, list group. Header? Do you have this group header here? We had a card header. I can put a list group inside of a card. Ah, here it is. Yes. This big old form with a div. What's this top level div? It's a form group meeting. Memorial meeting title. So this is cool. So this memorial meeting is the field and this double underscore reaches over to that field, looks at the title field for meeting and meetings. And we display meeting, which will get this stringified uh, version of that. basically that should be the only drop down we need so, the so I don't need all these other selects outside of the first one let's just see if this renders properly without filtering fast is undefined There we go, and an, uh, nice and ugly <laughs> drop down, but it works. Mm. So for now, we'll just use a bootstrap form widget. I just have to tell it. Form control, I think. under the thing? No. Probably doesn't need to. As long as it's got this name and that comes back into the context, we're good to go. Alright. Um, what else we got? Name.
probably do a form inline. That'll be a little cleaner. Ah, uh, what am I looking for? Form group. Oh, it's getting tired. Oh, I already have D. Cool. So then we'll have just a regular old input here. Uh, text is cool. Some copy pasty. So it looks like you might need a little bit of margin X to keep these from colliding. We don't need an ID text. This is a little bit of a tricky one because it's a fuzzy search across two fields. Mm, now we're looking in the title, fuzzy search in the title should be all right. So I can just title. So a little annoying detail. less evident when they're separated. All right, and is there a help text underneath those?
a little bit of documentation. I think it should be a partial search. I hope I'm not assuming too much. filtering to work in the UI through a form now. Just a submit button. So just get rid of some of the problems with the alignment. Uh, damn. baseline will work at this level. I think you have to assign it directly to the parent of the elements you want to be aligned. So the form has form group one, two, and a button. I'm going to just put it here. Components, forms, form in line. Everything is nicely aligned here. Strange that this doesn't. Use the same baseline. Well, I'm not gonna fight it too much. So what's gonna happen here now if I run this filter? 
it's going to submit it. Title and memorial meeting title. Yeah. All right. I think we're good to go there. So we get the query back, filter the keys based on the allowed facets, and then pass that into the query and see if it works. I believe this should just work if I go to the memorials and not break things with no. And now if I just want to say, oh, well, let's say Charles or yeah. And I filter there. And it's not working. Filter. Got to be a little bit more careful. So go back to memorials. So that's working. Let's try Charles. And it's not working. Lord. Oh, yeah, of course. Now I just have to be super duper careful. The more tired I get, there's two fields. So let me just fill them both in. Do my, do my copy and pasty. It's a little filter and choose a meeting. All right, Tile Charles Memorial Meeting, Palo Alto Friends Meeting. So that looks good. Next thing I've got to check is that I'm doing fuzzy or partial matching.
So each key needs to contain. What is it? Double? No. Is it? Yeah, it's just single. Valid character and identifier. Key. Key contains. If that'll work at least. Oh, wait. I think this should work here. Something was just borked with this server. Here we go. Title contains yada yada. That's working. Uh, okay. Oh, these are not, now they're out of sync, but I can fix that. Uh, let's go ahead and fix this. I'll try some JavaScript on the front end. Ooh, do that. So Charles. I need two different meetings. So Charles, where is he? At? Let me try this one, lowercase. Yeah, it's case instance. Excellent. Seems like the clear button is just to redirect to the memorials page.
Helps with the JavaScript button. All right, let's. Well, it seems to be working. Go to bed soon. Central Coast friends. That's good. All right, now I think we just need a little bit of JavaScript to clear the filter. And I mean, if a field is not submitted, why is it appearing in this query string? Gosh darn it. And do I want to use get or post? I think get is okay here. On the library, let me just check this library index page, how we did this, how we did the clear button specifically. Oh, it's hard coded here. That's not gonna work for me very much longer. Hmm, I'll have to figure out a way. Okay, let me just test this out now, see if I can go partial search. Uh, let's say, Uh, how about AT? Yeah, it's good. All right. Here's where I could use some vanilla JavaScript. Uh, JavaScript. Well, that's pretty straightforward. Window location reload. I can actually just test that here. The JavaScript browser. Uh, didn't work. That'll work. Okay.
believe in so So you do have to put it in script time. Right. So I suppose, well, uh, hey, what's up, the Versace Lord? Making a button without adding a type equals button. You live on the edge, I see. Uh, also, hello, I'm Versace. All right, let me do that type is button. Thanks for the advice. I appreciate it. What kind of edge cases would uh, crop up? Have you seen crop up with the, without the type equals button? I thought it would be implicit. And one thing I might want to do, I don't know if this is worth it, but um, if there's something in the query string, right? So if it's something after the question mark, then not show this button. But otherwise, I don't need to really show the button. It's just a little bit confusing. So. In plain JavaScript, usually the best practice move I try to do, especially on pages where there are multiple forms, especially the nested ones. So, uh, 
the Versace Lord or Versace. Versace, I'm saying that correctly, right? It's like the brand Versace, or how do you pronounce that? Mm. So is there a quick way to check for something in the query string? Location search. Location dot search, window location dot search. I don't want to specifically just if anything is is there. Uh, using substring or regex. This is your pronounced name, Versace. Yeah, very cool. Check out if query string exists here. Yeah. If it exists. Now, there's no direct way to do that. Man. Sometimes it's a little bit warty. I do have J uh, jQuery available, I think. Let me double check. I'm trying to do as much. Yeah. What is the version? Does that work? No. What do you got in there? Anything else? Find. Carousel. Some other weird stuff. All right. Just want to know if this string exists. Versace says you can transform the current window location to a URL object. From that, you can find better suitable properties. I just want to see if they. Okay, let me see. So a URL object would have a query property, for example, and if that's or how to get the value from the get parameters? Yeah. I'd... Okay, so let me see. Copy link location. What if this is just truthy? Let me just check this out real quick. Whoops. Title at. So if this is. Empty string. Triple equals true. Um, triple equals. Shouldn't a string be truthy? No. How do you check for truthiness of a, just whether it exists? Man. Would it be length? <laughs> it's kind of a kludgy one. But yeah, I just want to see if there's something there. Which, right? This should, should, uh, just be able to do if window location search yeah, yeah yeah okay I'm just a little bit slow with my JavaScript and it's after it's like 1 a.m. here I've been six hours in to this session I'm so close so I just want to put a, lot, a little touch here I want to hide this button so if I can get inside there and check the existence of those things and then conditionally display it I can solve window unload or something Check the query strings. 
and show the button if they exist. Or document unloaded. What's the difference? This is not a hobby project. It's uh, a website for a nonprofit organization in the Western United States uh, called Western Friend. So it's got a lot of features and we've been working on it for, uh, I think over a year now. We're pretty close. I think we'll have it wrapped up in the next couple of months, including content migration from Drupal to this new Wagtail uh, website. And all the sources on GitHub if you want to check it out. That's not it, but uh, it's in the lower hand corner of the video, the GitHub URL. Something I'll just try to do a little pull request on that if I can figure it out. But first, I just want to get this. I'm so close. All right, so I've got this script. All right, so you said I can just do if window location search. That's great. If window location search. Which is a console log search. And this will be actually where I'll toggle the display. What's a clean way in uh, just pure JavaScript and CSS to do? Uh, I'm trying to learn plain vanilla JavaScript, CSS, HTML approaches to web development in general, including reactivity and things like that, and web uh, components and such. I'm trying to stick on the pure path. So in this case, I'll just need to show this button, toggle the visibility of this button. Display is none, so I'll just have to just toggle the display. Let's go ahead and uh, save this and re refresh the page. So we've got search, and then if I clear, no search. I mean, yeah, so I just, anywhere in else. So, hmm. are you asking any, f using any frameworks at all? No, let's see, just jQuery, and I'm really trying to avoid any kind of JavaScript build tools, or um, I would consider a framework if it can be just dropped into a page and work like jQuery, like included from a CDN, it doesn't make mean I need a bundler or build tool, for example. Um, I know Vue.js uh, can just be dropped into a page, or what do they call the, um, Sort of like a progressive enhancement in a way. What else? I've, I've checked a couple of them. There's a couple of them out there that you can just drop right in, start working with it. But so far, the, this project has been relatively simple, and it, HTMLs uh, with sprinkles of CSS, uh, JavaScript, excuse me, have gone the distance. I like AngularJS when it's not very advanced. Right. Angular requires TypeScript, which requires Transpilation, uh, it's kind of a deal breaker. Uh, I want to also not lose the routing that Django does for us. Angular is not Angular JS. Oh, okay, okay, got you. Yeah, that's right. Is that what the acronym stands for now? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Those uh, self-referential acronyms. That'd be funny if they pulled that off. All right. So we do have this conditional thing working. Angular is love, says Connish Shmoni. Okay. What do you like about Angular? Connish, can I just call you Connish? Or Connie, Connie Shmoni. <laughs> say Connie. Is that the proper name? What should I, what's your shorter name? I can, I can say. Light Dom, here's the other one. I was thinking about this. Very small, three kilobyte view library that is packed. Web components, custom element, template literals, reactive, data binding, one-way data flow, two-way data binding, event handling, props, life cycle, state management, computer properties, directives, no dependencies, no virtual Dom, no build tool. That's nuts. 
even uh, just dropping a uh, view onto a page is, I think it's like about 30K or something like that. Now, view three, I think they're going to slim it down. And if you have like, if you do have a build tool, then it'll tree shake and, and things like that. But I just want something plain and simple that's web component oriented, even though I don't know very much about web component. It's, but generally I want to stick towards the web framework and try to learn vanilla as much as possible. I'm not a big fan of static typing or any kind of transpilation. Maybe I could approach, not in this context of this project, but I might be able to, I don't know if I would get into, what's it called, the um, WebAssembly? Like JavaScript or WebAssembly transpiling or something like that? I don't know. What I would use it for. Connie Schmani. Okay, I got it. Sorry about the uh, the mishap with the name. But yeah, this is pretty clean. I also like string templates. I don't like render functions if I can avoid it because there's a long-standing sort of I don't know best practice. I guess would be what it's called. Uh, sort of guideline not to mix um, logic and um, like your display and your function. <laughs> Gosh, I might have lost that thought midstream, but what is it called? To separate out your logic from your display. Your <laughs> what it's boiled down to is to have separate JavaScript and HTML, but that's not the essence of the idea. Presentations, sorry. My daily job is a data analyst. <laughs> a little bit of data engineering. So and I've got five years in full stack development, doing open source development of a geriatric well-being application that we've deployed here in the city where we live. Uh, it's in production with, I think, roughly a thousand residents. And this Western Friend website I've been doing for about five years. Now we're rewriting it, migrating it from Drupal PHP to Wagtail. Yes, indeedly doodly. So separating the logic from presentation, though, I think is a good thing. And I believe that Re like React and JSX have gone a wrong direction, not only with virtual DOM. I don't know if it's fully justified the virtual DOM, it's, I think it's pure overhead and the arguments against the DOM, I don't know if they're on, they're on solid ground. I think the arguments are mainly against imperative uh, manipulation of the DOM and people writing poor code, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the, the DOM is the fault. So yeah, I like string templates. I like having HTML and JavaScript separate because presentation and logic should be separate. And render functions also just scatter your presentation all throughout this really kind of nasty looking code, to be honest, to be frank, it's just kind of a, not a very exciting, I've really tried to stay away from it. Well, yeah, what do you like to build Versace? Have you got any open source projects you're working on? I don't want to get too like, uh, far off in a diatribe of like why I'm staying away from frameworks. <laughs> but there are some really compelling things I, that probably should get more attention. Like this light dom. I don't know how many contributors it's got. Not a lot, you know. So it's probably not going to see, you know, like the React, Facebook, Google, Angular communities are huge. Enterprise.net. Have you heard of Aurelia, by the way? On the topic of web frameworks, this one is gaining a lot of traction in uh, the .NET community, particularly. I think, so with frameworks, I know it's like a holy wars, and I'm not trying to spark any kind of holy wars or flame wars or anything like that, uh, but I have noticed there's like these alignments. So in PHP, there's the uh, Laravel framework, and they sort of adopted Vue.js as their, their go-to front-end framework. Django hasn't made any such proclamations. It mainly just has resolved to be a back-end framework server-rendered HTML, which is kind of funny that these frameworks have gone 
sort of full circle from SPA, uh, everything to now we're rendering on the server side again. But in the meantime, they've lost like the maturity of these backend frameworks. I don't think there's really been a mature JavaScript backend framework to uh, emerge because of the how fast people turn things over in the JavaScript world and kind of cast projects aside, unfortunately. But .NET probably has some good stuff. I don't have a lot of experience there. Versace says, I'm trying to stick with the big three, Vue, React, Angular, and the JavaScript world is adjusting quickly, and I'm trying my best to get dedicated into something that isn't already established. Try my best not to get dedicated. That's true. Well, I mean, that's fine. Fair enough. I'm just like, uh, let's check it out to graph. It's been around since 2015. It's not a fly-by-night, but it was mainly Rob Eisenberg who created it. So I've just seen a lot of... Uh, People and there's official .NET tooling for Aurelia. One of the things that I thought was compelling about Aurelia is that um, it, at least ostensibly, was oriented towards web components in the web platform. I think any of these frameworks uh, is doing a disservice to the community if they're duplicating functionality as part of the web platform or pulling people away from the platform or masquerading as web components when it's not really truly a web component. Now, I think Aurelia might have done that uh, to a certain extent Aurelia, Aurelia components aren't aren't following the web component spec fully, or you can't actually compile an Aurelia component to just a generic web component. Microsoft, so Versace says, Microsoft is trying to get the C sharp developers to leave JavaScript frameworks as a whole. Look up Blazor if you haven't seen it. Actually, I might have heard some references to Blazor. Whoops, where did I do that? Hmm, UI framework. I wait. This Trellic thing, Blazor UI. So Microsoft is trying to do this. Google is trying to do this with uh, PowerShell. Oh boy, ASP.NET. Uh, Google's trying to do it with Flutter a little bit, although it's not really a full stack framework. What does Blazor bring? Does it bring? Uh, Primitives like web standard primitives like you get out of Django or open web standards without code or transpilation. All modern web browsers, code running in the browser executes in the same security sandbox as JavaScript. Code and libraries, .NET standard, .NET, JavaScript and interop, call your C plus sharp, sharp code. What's the high level here, architecture? Blazor is basically Razor extended to be more than the JavaScript frameworks as I see it. I don't know what Razor is. Hmm. I will probably never delve into this ecosystem. Hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to orient myself towards the web platform, not away from it. I mean, I guess this is, says it's just using standards, but yeah. Asp. Oh, sorry, I thought that was a new person here. Razor is the asp.net markup language. Ah, okay. Gotcha. Cool. I guess, what did Connie leave? Connie Shmani, are you there? <laughs> All right. Let me get back on the task. It is six hours in, and I've, I'm so close. I just need to. Show and hide something. I could use light DOM for that. But I probably don't even need that. But anyways, check it out. Light DOM is kind of standards oriented. Just regular old scripts. And it's kind of like a, a configuration class sort of interface, which I think these projects like Vue and React are going away from a little bit. Lifecycle hooks. And then you just have your template. It's using just JavaScript. Well, they're not using backticks, but anyway. It's a pretty clean UI. Boom, 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 boom. All right, so let's go over here. Show and hide something. So essentially, your display equals none, right?
could be three schools. Yeah. So, do I just on this? Where did I put it? over there and now it took me all the way down. And this would be Is this literally just a property here or do you do the, the style display equals none? Yeah, there we go. Now I can check for type an ID. Let's see. Oh, I miss him. Hey, what's up? Uh, let's see. I miss some discussions here. Level two learn. Level two says you both are wrong. The future is other language in the browser via compiling to JavaScript. Or what about compiling to uh, again WebAssembly? Versace says the future is set in stones, and no one of us is right. So who are you to say? <laughs> it's gonna be true that. And WebGL being the render to replace the DOM by taking the DOM and making it into WebGL. Hmm, that'd be interesting. With WebGL though, can you can you can you just <laughs> magic wand over something? And like, oh god, I have a lot of oh this isn't my website. <laughs> and like click it and, and change properties in the spec because if not, I don't know if WebGL's like the end all be all. I think SVG's got a lot of potential also. And uh, looks like there's a little bit of flame wars. Let's not have flame wars. I think it, this is good spirited though. Versace says, very realistic that business software is going to be rendered in WebGL. Okay, so a little bit of sarcasm there. Level T says, along with the code being converted to JS a, a bit, so the company can utilize their C++ and Java devs more advanced stuff. That's pretty cool. Yeah, to have a web uh, WebAssembly, for example, as a compilation target from all these other languages. That's powerful. Wasm, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, web. When level two said web, said JS. They meant wasm. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Yeah, that's pretty rad. I'm a little bit afraid, and this is probably unguided uh, or misguided, but that with wasm we won't have the cool view source ability anymore. It'll be all just basically gobbledygook, so to speak. And it, I brought this point up where I was raising the question in uh, Hacker News and it was pointed out that well when you you minify or what is that called uglify JS it's basically the same thing you, you can't really it's, see you know view source to see how it works that makes sense but uh, yeah I just am afraid that we're going to move away from this naturally open source you know universal medium of the web platform to just more closed and proprietary stuff, tools, and frameworks, and stuff. Versace says, I believe that WebAssembly is going to play a huge role. The rise of Node.js and JavaScript as a whole is too big to ignore. The future isn't straight up ditching native and only transpiling. Hmm. All right. So yes, WebAssembly is going to be huge, but it's not the full truth of what is to come. All right, 
right, so I'm really close here. Now I just need to get uh, building by ID. Can you use a uh, const in regular browsers now? I think I've already asked this, but I'm always afraid. says I believe they have map source uh, where you can debug the code still yeah source maps right that's when you you get source maps from JavaScript when you compile it but will WebAssembly have the equivalent of source maps that's interesting rust and webs assembly Ooh, they got an issue for that Looks like it's open. Check it out, y'all. Check it out. This is what I like about open standards and the web platform. Very cool. All right, I think I'm almost there. So eyes are getting blurry. So, whoa, whoa, whoa. And people always use JS too, as long as there wasn't. All right, I'm just gonna complete the quest. Dot display. Block. All right, save that. So right here, nothing, so the button can hide. Now if I type at, I filter it, ah! <laughs> Let me clear out my print statement, I don't need that anymore. Toggle class is on and off instead. Yeah, all right, crying robot. I will toggle the classes on and off, Versace Lord. I turned to HTML or W3 schools. Toggle display. How's that? And I'm going to try it with const. I'm bot. Let me just see if this even works. Dang it. You will need to create a class for whatever you wish to happen. Oh, I got it, I got it. Yeah, classless, I'm thinking, yes. Um, let me just see if that exists. They already have it. Yeah, oh, but check it out.
So if I set it to invisible, then I toggle invisible, that should work. By default, it's invisible. Actually, making my code a little bit better. I hope it'll work. Yep, and it works. Ooh, but that's still there. Inline styling video, that's all. Well. Uh, hmm. Maybe if I can just get it, to, uh, get it to display inline. I think that if I put it inside the form, I don't know if this is going to work, but let's try it out. Well, <laughs> no, still work. Still didn't work. Hmm. All right, six hours. Six hours in. We're gonna wrap it up. So the first it's just not. Versace, have you worked with Bootstrap a little bit? I'd like to just make this a little bit more crispy. I don't like leaving stuff like this hanging. It's just a little bit janky looking. Two things, I'd like it all just to be flat in line and then this to be like baseline, align, baseline. I got a little bell notification thing. Okay. Good grief. What are you using for grids? Flex? I didn't specify that. This is a form and I do have some flex classes. Let me double check. For this facet form, I don't have flex classes applied here. I have just a form inline class. So what do we do to apply flex, deflex? Oops, wrong button there, I didn't want to do that. Let me see if this works. At least for getting a width 100, no. Now I'm using bootstrap, so copy out that, and I don't know much about flex classes or anything, but it does have helpers for that. Flex box, you just say deflex. Display flex. For flex items. And the inline flex. And that would be the form, these form groups and two buttons. I do this. We got that. We got 
Leave that open. Versace Lord. Versace says, hard to help from here. If you push the newest stuff somewhere, I could help. But for now, can I just point on minor stuff? Yeah, if you got minor stuff to point out, that's cool too. Definitely welcome any feedback, constructive feedback. Ah, yeah. If I look at the... So we have vertical alignment, but that's just not working. Versace says, if you're using Display Flex, I like the property Justify Content. All right. The example below uses the Flexbox utility to vertically center contents. Form row align items center. So we got our form here, facet form, which I don't really, really don't need the uh, ID anymore. So See what this looks like without the. Uh... I don't mind having the buttons a little bit. Well, I was hoping for the whole thing to be in line. To be honest. All right. So let's take a look. So that there's like had no effect. What if I just do that? There we go. So now we have a form. Maybe this doesn't look so bad and I can just make this collapsible and not fight it. <laughs> Sometimes if I just don't fight it and I just find a different way to go forward, that that's, seems to work. See though, I want it to start. Start collapsed. Ah, 
Ja. Well, that's pretty good. We can change the text there, and then literally you just do the filter, ding dong, and then show the filter, and then clear filters. I hope that's not too much. Ah, the other things I gotta populate this field. Oh, yeah. So yeah, we're getting close. When there's something here. Should be synchronized there. Oh man, I gotta keep the state in sync with the the URL. So I have to basically on render with the uh, page renders. I need to set the value. I've done this before. Where was I? In the JavaScript for the library page. This is where like declarative uh, DOM, declarative yeah state uh, synchronization with the DOM becomes very elegant. I think we have the JavaScript here. URL params. So what is to I'm not actually setting the value there. Just trying to think about it. No, let's just go ahead and grab. It says I'm keeping the search facets in sync with the URL params, so then I'm grabbing the, URL, the facets, and for each of those, I'm updating a slim select. Yeah, I can do this. So for each of the facets, each of the URL params, I'll look for a, a DOM element with a matching name because the URL parameters match up with the name and then I'll set the value of that element with the, with the value of that. I think it'll work. Not very articulate. But let me just try it out. And can I use the uh, fat arrow function in the browser? I think I can, right? Is param a reserved word? Or is that because it's a syntax? Line? Okay, so he's getting the value. <clears throat> so let me just look at the docs for this. Ah, I'm losing my, close that. What is URL search params gonna give me? It's like a list. So key value, that's good.
wide injuries. What's the difference between injuries? Injuries and iterator. Values, so not the keys. I'm looking for the keys. So I could use keys. Four in. Let me just do the four key value in. Thanks, let me hop back there. Yo, params keys dot for each. Hey, I thought uh, key, isn't that this? Your params keys for each console log key. I can use the fat arrow, but I'm not sure that that's the problem here. I do want it to span multiple lines because I think I'm gonna have to do a couple of things. Shouldn't this work right here? Or do I just need window location? Params keys for each key function. If you want it as a function, Well, I don't need the, both the fat arrow and the function notation, right? Like, fat arrow is a replacement for function. This is weird. I'm wondering, though, if the problem is that if I just look at UL params first, and let's just take a look at that. Take that, take a look at that. Keys, iterator, wow. Okay, so I have to iterate over it.
Oops. Oh, come on, ding dong. Huh. Next. Oikasti, as we say. Okay, so that's the problem. Whatever I'm doing here is not working. Next. So the iterator is empty. I mean, somehow I got this to work. If I look at the library index page, keep search facets. Uh, I'm using git, but. Uh, I just want to iterate over them. I don't want to necessarily get them by name. I suppose I could. I mean, I, this is just hard coding it. But maybe that's okay. No, I don't really want to do that because uh, I don't want to hard code it because then my code starts to get brittle. Um, the source of truth really should be the DOM. The name element is what's controlling all of this of the form, the name property of the form elements. In other words, when I look at the form, this is what populates the query string. I should only have it defined in one place. And then it sort of lines up with the backend code. This is uh, coming directly out of the convention for querying uh, how Django um, query filters work. Yes. So I just wanted to iterate over all of the values in that query string. I'm not sure how they're entries, maybe. I'm not sure how they're populating that URL search params. Mm. Mm -mm, mm -mm, examples, param string search params. I just want to use the current search params for the current URL for the window. For current window. Window location search. I think this is the one I actually. You don't need jQuery. Excellent. And I don't want a big fat function either. If I can avoid it. I don't want to get them by name. I just want to get an iterator of them. So yeah, this is. Where are we at? URL parameters equals new URL search parameters, window location search. And this all should really go inside of there, but I'll move it in a second. If I don't have the URL search parameters and it shouldn't be running as good. All I've got is next. Was I, because I was using const? Maybe that was the problem. Ah, then the other thing is,
There we go. All right. So if there are search params, Now I just need to get uh, an element for each of those and set the value for that element. Now inside here, I can use a const, right? Inside of this block. Where is element? Element's a reserve word. Let, uh, so I can use const. No, con okay, so element equals Get element by name. I could do get element by ID as long as the ID and name match. This is where it starts to get brittle, also. I'll just, and then they're different. So one is a select and one is ah oh, damn. This is just ah oh, pain in the ass. Maybe it's not a big deal. Let me just let's see if I get it. So we have both filters active. But I think they have different APIs. I think these elements have different APIs. Save all the value. Thank you for having consistency. So that one worked. Ah, the title was empty. It works. Brilliant. Not too much JavaScript. Learning the, the proper APIs for things.
if I do document get elements by name, then I have to iterate over those. That adds one more layer of nesting. I don't really want to do that. So I'll, I think I'll just settle for a little bit of duplication here. The name is important for the form submission. The ID is important for keeping this minimal. I wonder if I add this random search fa uh, facet, it'll break. It's not a crucial error so long as the others work. If I load it at the front, for example, ah, but since it threw an exception here, then the code afterwards didn't work. So yeah, I need to try catch. What do you do? Now, do backticks work in the browser now? Or. Alternatively I, could, alternatively, I could just move this code a little higher. It doesn't really matter too much. Oh, that looks nice. All right, very cool. I think this is a good, really good stopping point. Ooh, seven hours. Almost, dang. This turned out to be a, kind of a <laughs> big endeavor. So. Let me just double check that here. we do what did we do i'll commit and push if you're wanting to check this code out and uh, 
I'll open a pull request if you'd like to add any inline comments. I'd be glad, grateful for those. Anybody who's still in the room, I just realized that there's no one viewer at this point. No worries, no worries. Level two says the Versace Lord left. No oh, man, <laughs> bummer, dude. They were pretty interesting. All right. Here. Looks like it's just a big lint, perhaps. Yeah, I just took off one line of uh, indentation over the whole thing. Very cool. Oh man, this has been a long one. Go open that pull request. I think I just opened, I created an issue for this one, yeah, from 159. I'll have to upload this and do a recap when I am just in better shape. I'm super tired now. It's a pretty big feature. Turned out. Hmm. actually learned some cool stuff uh, level two I don't know if you saw that earlier part where we switched out the uh, the editing widget for the memorial and stuff like that it was really cool to this new calendar widget um, flat picker the default calendar widget that Wagtail uses is a jQuery date picker and it only lets you select dates going back to 1950 and in this case, it didn't really work. And this has got a nicer UX anyway, I think. So, except uh, you can't just select the date here, unfortunately. Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yep, what else do we do? That's about it. Just some fields and faceted searching. Pagination, pagination, faceted searching, those are the main things. So changing the date widget, faceted search, and pagination. And just, you know, making the templates and stuff took quite a lot of effort. And we had a couple of little non sequiturs. Those are always fun. Very, very cool. All right. Well, thanks uh, hang for hanging out again, level two. I appreciate it. And uh, Versace Lord, or Versace, I guess you were called. It was nice to have the company. Who else stopped in? Let me just scroll up a little bit. 
is identical. That was cool. They had quite a long conversation there. Now Connie, Connie Schmani, I think was the name. They they like said one thing and ran off. That that, that was cool to have more uh, participants in the chat. Anybody else I'm overlooking? Nope. Okay, we got Linux ninety four. Thanks for the follow. I think Biz Dividend, Biz Dividn also. Hello, hi Tesh. Thanks for the follow. Is identical. Thank you for the follow. Looks like it's a pretty productive session in terms of community building, getting people involved with the stream. Yeah, once again, this has been a Code Buddies Hangout. CodeBuddies.org is a really great community where you can get involved with some open source project <coughs> projects. The platform itself is open source and under revision right now where there's in fact a Django rewrite of the platform they've been live streaming recently. Uh, so if you'd like to get in at the ground level of an open source project or if you want to help some people along their learning journey or if you yourself are interested in uh, learning a little bit about uh, any type of uh, software, technology, um, community, uh, code Buddies community is a great place to get involved. All right, well, thanks to everybody for watching. Thanks again, Level 2, for hanging out. Good seeing you, and uh, let's try to work on the uh, music app again soon. Have a great day.